What's up? It's the Kokomo Press Podcast. I'm Jordan Granger, and I'm here joined by an excellent panel. I've got my co-host Courtney Richardson in the house, and I have a husband and wife comedy duo of Jeff McKinley and Nick Sure, a.k.a. Nikki Sheridan, a.k.a. Nicolette, a.k.a. Donkey, a.k.a. Cakes. You'll know all that when you watch the show. We had a great time talking about so much, including comedy in the area. Uh, first time being a comedian, Nick's kind of new at it, which is pretty great. And we got her to give Courtney a little bit of advice on how to start because she's going to be doing that soon. And we talked a little bit about our open mic coming up. And then we just talked about random things, such as the fact that Nick's involved with a group called Unchained souls, which helps animals, specifically puppy dogs, in need in the community that can't be helped by the Kokomo Humane Society. So that's great. And Jeff told us all about a couple shows he has in Peru, Illinois. That's not Indiana. That's Illinois. Check those out. There's a couple of different ones. But we also talked about so much in the news. One thing we talked about is Shane Gillis and his paid partnership with Bud Light, which is going to be great for the beer and great for him because he's been wanting that for a while. And we talked about his upcoming appearance on February 24th on SNL, which is great. He's going to be there with 21 Savage. And it's kind of like a full circle moment based on how he came about and all, all the things that he's done. Well, we also talked about our feud with Barry Weinfield. You'll find him on Facebook. He's the worst. He's a puppet, and he really deserves everything he gets. We talked about a Korean corn dog, which if you look that up, we are very sorry. We talked about the human centipede, which is crazy. We talked about that teacher with three degrees who's only 16 years old, and it's like, if you've got three degrees, why are you a teacher? You're barely getting paid. We talked about so much on this episode. We thank you guys for enjoying this amazing episode with Nick Shear, Jeff McKinley, Courtney Richardson, and myself, Jordan Granger. It's the Kokomo Press Podcast, baby. Woo! This video contains adult content not suitable for children. What's up? It's the Kokomo Press Podcast. I'm Jordan Granger, and we have an exciting panel today of uber funny people, which is what I like to uh, have on the show. But first and foremost, we have my co-host. Courtney Richardson. Hello. How are you doing, Courtney? I'm great. You having a great time? I'm having a great time. All right. And we have for the first time on the podcast ever, Nick Sure or Nikki, right? Yeah, Is it Sure? Sure. Cher. Sheridan. Sheridan. Sure. Yeah, I was I was like really careful not to, when I say Nick Share. You know what I mean? It's there's a it's we're walking a fine line there. <laughs> we're walking a fine line. And her husband. Jeff. Jeff McKinley. 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 Yes. Okay. I was like, I, I, I want to say Jeffrey all the time. Anyway, this is a great we got The whole panel's in here. We're going to hang out. First time for both of you. Yes. This is great. It's exciting. This is kind of in our way now. I can't see him very well, but we'll we'll figure it out, right? We'll, <laughs> we'll try to make eye contact through the wires at like Kanye West. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, this, I'm, I'm excited to have you here. We've, we've had a pretty big week for comedy here at Tokomo Press. We're excited for some things that we have going on. And uh, before we even knew that we were going to have exciting news we are already booked you guys and tried to figure it out and i know because we had tried to do this a couple weeks ago and you had a show and then there was like a we had to film on a saturday remember that yeah mm -hmm. and then she couldn't even make it so it ended up just being sean and you guys know sean del rumple mm -hmm. yep. a local comedian but yep. how you guys doing pretty good good yep. yeah We're excited to be here yeah excited yep. to be here first time yeah, podcast first time, ever. First time. Hey, <laughs> yeah it's exciting man yeah i, I with the way we, like I told you earlier, but when we started this podcast, it was just like a, a USB mic and an I, and my iPad was the camera. And we've kind of, you guys have gotten us at the perfect time because we've got all these cool abilities. We can do oh, so yeah. much, you know, <laughs> so many, so much room for activity. We There's can hear no ourselves room. talk. Hear ourselves talk with headphones. You got new headphones. Are you happy? I did. Yeah. Aren't they great? Who are they by? I don't know. Sennheiser, I think. I think. I think Maddie told me Sennheiser. Yeah, yeah. Says okay, says. Cool. yeah, yeah. I can't. It up here. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Those are those are I'm high real, class. I'm really professional, guys. You're so pro you have probably right. professional headphones. They're in the not world. purple, but whatever. <laughs> you mad? But I'm you know. so mad. She wanted them to match her hair. No, you're good. Go ahead. <laughs> no spray painting. Oh, we could. Yeah, yeah you can always do that. Like Throw some stickers on there. Yeah. Yeah, make them beautiful. <gasps> I'm gonna. You should put a unicorn on this side, though. Yeah. 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 Make him super gay. So I'm gonna make him super gay. But the you said you don't like the bi flag though. That's not what, is that what you said? You'd rather have the pan flag. Yeah, it's nicer. No. No. Is it the I, other I don't want the pan flag. I want the bi flag. Okay. Yeah. She's pan, but she doesn't want the pan flag on it's there stupid. because it's yellow. Doesn't... I don't like yellow. <laughs> I only know like the actual flag. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. All I know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's so many of them now. You know. There's so many. So you many. You get the straight flags. flag on yours. 
the super straight. Remember they had yeah. the super straight? Yes. <laughs> I'm not straight though. I'm pan. Remember? Oh yeah. You can have the it. pan flag on yours. I have a friend who's gay and yeah. uh, I was with my ex and his mom like accused me of like cheating on my ex with my super gay friend. Yeah. And I was like, this guy is super gay. And he, th- my friend thought it was so funny. And he was like, I'm going to come to your house in a speedo with a gay pride flag. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you guys been married? Um, it will be a year in May. A year in May. That's Aww. amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys are coming up on, so you guys were kind of had a whirlwind, right? I mean, based on what I saw, on, I mean, it's pretty great. I love yeah. that you guys knew, still kind of knew love, you yep. know what I mean? That's yep. that's great. It was a whirlwind experience. You guys kind of met at a comedy show, which is crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Year. We talked a little bit before the podcast, so people were like, they're like, what's going on? But you guys met at an, like at an open mic yep. in yeah. town. That's awesome, dude. Fell in love in comedy. You, you were like, he's funny. And he was like, somebody thinks I'm funny. I better get better give her a ring, you know. Probably exactly how <laughs> now, She does stand-up comedy, which, which is, is awesome. great, yeah. A lot of guys have to pay good money to get ridiculed, but she does it for free on stage. <laughs> Some of my jokes are We don't kink him. shame. Yeah, we don't kink shame. So. That's so so either that's him being into. old or like, I'm, I'm younger and I know more about electronics. So <laughs> it still kind of has to do with him being old, but like. Yeah. It's good. You guys have an age gap love, right? You guys ever oh, watch yeah. that show? Uh-uh. There's a show called Age Gap Love, huh. just kind of cool. Like of people that date older or younger, depending upon you know whatever their preference is. There was a really cool, a really cool one where a guy like his 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 uh, his mom was the same age as his girl. You know, like oh, it was like yeah, it's the same. Way. Have, is it yeah. weird? Or is yeah, it cool? I'm, I'm same age as her parents, which yeah. is cool. Because oh, my mom. I have friends I can hang out and yeah. <laughs> you guys are all talking about the old TV shows and she's like, "Oh, oh dad, oh they daddy." Help, they, they help explain <laughs> cultural dad and references. Daddy, stop <laughs> Sorry, it. this is a come on, this is a comedian podcast. I have a Thank joke you. about it. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> they both grabbed the best head is. <laughs> um, my mom is almost exactly a two months younger than him. Oh shit! They, they both That's turned cool. fifty six this last year. Yeah. And then my dad, he will be fifty nine. Yeah, my uncle, his uh, his daughter, my cousin, but it, it, you know, it, 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 my cousin, my, my uncle, uh, she married a man that's older than her dad. So like, it, they, they're like peers, but he's also he's a little bit older. It was our college professor, so it was it was always a conversation there. Like, what? How did you? But it's like college, so it's not as. It's still like you're like there's an age gap there, but you're an adult. You know what I mean? I feel like, like this was an episode on Friends. Was it? Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't that? Wasn't that? Ross. Ross started yeah. dating one of his students. Co- students. Well, yeah. I thought you were talking about the part where, like, was it Monica was dating the older gentleman? That oh, was that, that too. too? Yeah. Anything could be an episode. They they had everything on that show. <laughs> you know, I've Matt never watched. Matt watches it to go to sleep. I've never, never watched a single episode of Friends. Really? Yeah. I watched like bits and pieces here and there. I had two really good friends in middle school that like were obsessed with friends, like had friends trivia games and shit and would hang out and talk friends. And I was like, how about just be friends? How about yeah. that? <laughs> we watch friends because we don't have any. Yeah. <laughs> What's that Al Bundy quote? There's an Al Bundy quote. Friends don't have them, don't need them. Sure as hell don't want to watch them. <laughs> yeah. I fucking love Al Bundy. You guys ever watch Married with Children oh, back in the that's, day? That's classic. Kelly Bundy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <sighs> she just uh, came out. Um, Christina Applegate. She just came out, uh, I think was the... The Oscars or one of those shows and was talking and she's got like severe like ALS, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or I Parkinson or something. I didn't watch a lot of TV when I was a kid. No, not at all? No, I played three sports and then I What sports? Out, uh basketball, volleyball and softball. Hell yeah, dude. Those are those are good ones. Yeah, I still I wanna play softball now, but there's not a like any softball teams in Peru you have to travel. No. Yeah, there's some here. There's a lot going on here. You have to my ex wife is she's six two and she plays softball all the fucking time to the point where I'm like, Hey, do you remember like you have kids? Uh <laughs> hey yo, I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right. Um <laughs> But yeah, I'm like calling her out, like being like, "Hey, man, you know, come get your son sometime." But uh, no, they she plays softball like everywhere. They have this thing called Mojos. It's like a huge softball tournament every year in like Ohio, and then they have like some other huge softball tournament in Kentucky. Every and she's always going to these fucking things. So. I played uh, in a softball tournament this last year for Chrysler. Mm-hmm. Um, I played in that. My team leader, she did something to her leg, and they needed somebody, and she asked if I would play. Yeah. Did you? Uh, did you? Uh, what team did you play on? Do you know the For name? Cooper's Pub. Oh, we were on the same team. Were we? Holy shit. <laughs> we were on the same team? I, know. I was like, I, You look familiar, but I couldn't remember why. Yeah, I played yeah, on Cooper's Pub. I didn't have orange hair. I was a shortstop. Um, I was in the field. I hit a home run, like, yeah. to the fence. Fuck yeah. 
I, I can't remember every... anything that day. I was so gone, dude. I, I they I showed up because it was like real early. Man. Yeah, but we had to be there like like way too early to play yeah. sports, and it was hot as hell that day. Like and it, it was, was sunny hot. as shit. And I was yeah. trying to hit. I've never played slow pitch, and the ball was like coming at my face, and the ball blended in with the sun. I was yeah. like, how am I supposed to hit this thing? Yeah, I started the first game. I played third. And my buddy Paul played short, and then they're like, "We're gonna swamp you too." And Paul hadn't played softball in a while. I actually hadn't played softball in over a year, but it's like a bike for me. I get out. There. It's I'm really good at like that sport particularly because there's a lot of laziness involved. I don't have to do very much. I just get to stand there until the ball comes to me. Then I make a move or I hit the ball and I run. And so uh, I, uh, <laughs> I they moved me to shortstop. But for some reason, that's the only good sport. You know, I love basketball. I hate. I, I don't even like baseball that much, but I'm good at it, so I end up playing it because I'm like, fucking might as well. I have nothing to offer here. No? Me neither. I'm ath- not athletic. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. She's wheezy over here. <laughs> Just a run, running the first base, she'd be done for. Uh, when we I tried to play baseball before. <laughs> when I played, it had been like eight years since I played. Yeah. And I thought I was out of shape, but then I realized, like, oh my god, I'm so sore. We did well. We actually, I mean, we won a few games, right? We won, like, a few of them. Yeah. More than that. Um, I think we, I know we went into the loser's bracket, and then we didn't get to play. We, went out, we won out of the loser's bracket. We had lost the first game, and then we went, won three straight games, I think it was, and then we lost the, four, the fifth game. We played way more games than we should have. I, was, I told them, I was like, I can only be here for, like, one, two games max, and then they're like, please, please come back. Don't leave us. <laughs> We need you. I know I hit a home run, and they were all like, "Woo!" Yeah. And then, um, I can't remember if I caught the ball, but somebody hit it, and it came all the way out in the outfield almost to the fence. Hell yeah! And I think I caught it, and I like fucking fell <laughs> and rolled, and it was still like in my hand. Yeah, it's fun, man. I like I like playing sports just for that reason because you get out there amongst people you don't. I mean, we didn't know each other, and then we're on the same team, and we we're like, we just found out we were on the same team, which is crazy. I got that shirt. Yeah, Cooper's Pub, man. I, I'm actually really. We have we're working with Cooper's Pub, and, and the, the 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 news is out right now. The Kokomo Press is doing a a, co, a comedy open mic weekly every Thursday at 8 p.m. at Cooper's Pub. Uh, comedians, if you wanna, you can either hit us up the day of and messenger, or you can show up at 7:30 and sign up, and then we're gonna be doing downstairs <laughs> in, the, uh, in the comedy den. So that'll be exciting. I know we talked a little bit about that because you guys go to the Blind Tiger, which is mm-hmm. on Wednesday nights at yep. the Elbow Room, which right. is great with Jimmy and them, Lenny and Jimmy, and who else goes up there? Uh, Doug Arnold, Dougie, yeah, yep. Dougie Fresh. Well, Dougie. Um, He's going to be on the show in a few weeks. That's a Is he? Yeah, one yeah. like mixed mix guy that does the beard. Yeah. Uh, oh, I know him. Mixed guy with the beard. I know him. <laughs> John, Atkins. John Atkins. He's, John Atkins. No, yeah, John, well, John Atkins. Yeah. But. yeah. but you guys go there, and then you guys were telling me a little bit about a new open mic that's going on in um, Colum- at Portside Pizza in where? Columbia City. Columbia Starting City. on February 18th. And that's your friend Delmar Berkey. Delmar Berkey. I've yeah. known him since uh, back in the early 90s. We did comedy together. So That's awesome. When I got back into it, I got in touch with him, and he got started doing it again. Hell yeah. Funny guy. He plays a ukulele and does a lot of neat songs and everything. So This is more family friendly, so if you've got a, you got a five, ten minutes of where you can go up there and maybe talk about your kids or something, as long as they didn't do anything <laughs> like my kids and curse you out or something. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm so bad at that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> ancient. Yeah, ancient. Yeah. She, like, when you guys uh, got married, she was like, can you bring something old? And she, she was like, I'm already here. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> something blue. She just dyed her hair. Fuck it. You know what I mean? I have had blue hair once. Yeah? Yeah, it was awful. <laughs> yeah, he was telling us before the show, you know, he likes the red hair on you. So that's always Yeah, funny. I'd wanted to be, like, a redhead, like, ginger color for a long time. I've yeah. done blonde. And my friends in high school were like, oh, you wouldn't look good blonde. And I rocked the shit out of that. Hell yeah. Um, and then I finally was like, I want to do something different. It had been two years since I like completely colored my hair because I had fried it. Yeah. I bleached it three times in one week to get it from black and gray to bleach blonde so I could make it blue. Yeah. That's, that, that'll awful. do it. That'll do it. <laughs> it was up to my chin. I, was, I hated my life forever. <laughs> and then I was like, man, I really want to color my hair. Yeah. It came, I, it came out more orange, and then I added the uh, conditioner that made it more. Yeah, we call color. redhead. We call them redheads, but really, it's more orange. We all know that. You know what I mean? When I was a kid, I loved Red Sonia comic books. Yeah, and so when she said she's dying her hair red, I was like, yes, yes. Now if I can get her a sword, <laughs> <laughs> that's all you need. Yeah. He has a little sword at home. 
Yeah. <laughs> as much as you're a little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You want the sword until she pulls it out. One disagreement, she's like, you know what? You know, we got to talk. Let's have it. If you want to talk to me, talk to the sword. Uh, we yeah. went to a New Year's party, and um, I wore this like red velvet dress. And I kept looking at myself. I was like, man, I look real familiar. I look like Jessica Rabbit. Mm. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, yeah. I, I love Jessica shit. Rabbit, dude. Back in the day with uh, um, what's Christopher Lloyd? He played the bad guy, mm-hmm. right? Yep. He, and he's the shit, man. He, back to the Future. Uh, he was in the Adams family. He's in everything. You know what I'm about? I, s- I seen a guy in a <laughs> gas station. <laughs> yeah. I seen a guy in a gas station. He had one tooth right here and yeah. and like he it looked like baby Herman grown up. Yeah. I almost asked for a selfie. <laughs> <It was incredible. laughs> well, I'm happy you waited until I got my teeth fixed. So. I'm a baby Herman. Now, I want to. I wanted to shave my head. My girl won't let me shave my head because she's like afraid that it's going to go away. All of it's just. You're just going to shave it. It's never going to come back. Never coming back or something. But like you know, I'm I'm, I'm in the mid 30s. It's about that time. And but I've had friends since they were 20. You've got a full head of hair, man. Oh yeah. So you're going to always be young. Just he needs a haircut. Hair. And it grows fast too. I, when I was before we got married, I'd let it go, and. In six months, I look like a former 70s teen idol who got hooked on Taco Bell and Twinkies instead of heroin. And he people, needs a haircut really yeah. bad. I get called ma'am a lot. Last open mic night at, at uh, Elbow Room, somebody, because uh, I talk about it, I get called ma'am and everything. And the guy told me, you know, seriously, dude, I thought you was a girl or you were in transition. And I was oh my God. I was a little embarrassed, but then I was thinking, good, the material still works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, on our first date, this lady called him ma'am yeah you look kind of like a lesbian the, well, yeah I was, long told hair. I was told i look look like a lesbian trying to be oh butch my. and i'm like <laughs> trying <laughs> yesterday i met the nicest lady at ollie's i was buying some like lights and uh she was uh like visibly a trans woman but like her husband was like a trans man and I'm looking at the two of them, and I'm like, you know, they just switched roles. But I'm like, I'm just so happy I live in a world where two people can find each other. Because back in the day, you might, they might not have found each other in that way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And they get to play the roles that they that they feel comfortable in together. And they're still like a, a, a man, a woman. They're still a penis and a vagina. <laughs> they're just the woman has the vagina and the man has the penis. I think, or the woman has the penis and the man has. The, I think that's pretty great. It's pretty great. She was real nice though. She was talking to me about the um, about the lights that I was buying. I was like, I was like, yeah, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> <Ba-doom, boom. laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> that's my segue. That's cool. Portside Pizza Tri Lakes. That's in uh, Columbia City. Check that out with uh, Delmar. Delmar Berkey. <laughs> that's the name of the gentleman who uh, who's is on the side of the YMCA. Delmar Del- Delmar Dory or Delmarie. Del- Delmar Del- I Delmarie. have no idea. Yeah, he runs. Uh, uh, I think it's uh, Syndicate Sales. He was the guy who does Syndicate Sales out there. On. Uh... Hey, my mom used to work there. Yeah, I know. That's how we met. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think my buddy Alec works. You and your mom? Who? Alec Davidson. Okay. I don't know, Ellie. What's Ali doing later? I'm just kidding. But um bum bum bum. <laughs> All right, we're right back. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> and we're back Stop from it. commercial break. <laughs> Sorry, I was doing you guys seen the Adam Ray? You guys you guys into comedians, obviously. Mm-hmm. You ever heard of Adam He's Ray? I've right. not heard him. He does a Dr. Phil live show where he dresses up as Dr. Phil and does a whole show as Dr. Phil and brings like comedians up and talks to them. If you ever on oh, that uh, sounds cool. YouTube and it's so funny. And that's what he does. He's like, we'll be right back. Oh no, we're keeping it right here. It's just, fun. he just does this. There's certain, I've been watching it so much that now it's like a tick. He does it every time I talk. Yeah. And we'll be right back. <laughs> just cause I always wish I could do an impression of Dr. Phil. Cause he's the best. Yeah. It's just like Mr. Mackey. Is it Mr. Okay. It's basically like that. Okay. And just <laughs> maybe just, so you were sitting with your family. And you were having a conversation. So everybody in the audience is hosts? All right. We'll be right back. It's just like, that's all it is. <laughs> he barely sounds like like Dr. Phil. It's just he dresses up with the bald wig. and just Very obviously. It's so wig. funny, dude. He had uh, Whitney Cummings and uh, Nikki Glaser on there. And it was one of my favorite episodes they have done just because they're, they're so game for all the stupid shit. And then he, uh, Jeremiah Watkins also, he's a comedian. He does uh, stand up on the spot. He does a show uh, like that. So I watch a lot of random comedians. You guys, are, you guys watched any random comedian shows? I watch uh, a lot of random comedians on Reels on Facebook. Yeah, is there anybody in particular you like? Uh, the Drew guy. I want to see him. The, the Drew, Stutter guy? Drew Lynch. Lynch. Yeah, yeah, the Stutter guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, um, my friend that I was talking about earlier, it's gay, his name's Chance. Yeah. Uh, he's like one of my best friends. He moved to Georgia, but uh, we would watch him. And in one of his skits, he's like, and why's that? <laughs> and we just mock it all the time. Isn't he from Indiana? I don't know. I, th- I thought, the- I know he did like uh, Somebody's Got Talent. One of those like. Uh, uh, America's Got Talent? That one, yeah. He did. I think that's where he got big at yeah. first. I, I like him. and then- Andrew Larris. There's another guy I like too. I don't remember his name. I did like Matt Rife there for a minute. Yeah, until and you then he. Joke. Well, the the women joke really didn't bother me as much as like the abuse jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, and I don't know, he just seems a little too cocky for his pants. If that yeah, makes sense. it usually happens, you know. Like he's funny, but yeah, if he wasn't a stand up, my thing about any joke is like if you're not a stand up and you say it, at a, like let's say you're at work and somebody says a DV joke and you're, I mean, I'll look at him like, are you fucking kidding me? We're at work right now. But if you go to a stand up show and somebody does a DV joke, I just assume they're trying to be funny. You know what I mean? Like if they're trying to be funny, I think they're. I, I bring this up a lot on the show, but uh, Patrice O'Neill is one of my favorite comedians. He, the elephant in the room, hilarious, <laughs> and he passed away from a uh, from a battle with diabetes. That's what he said. A battle with diabetes. A battle he with battled it. it. He battled it for years. He did. He battled it. Anyway, um, he called it. He called it. Uh, what he, he had a nickname for it. He called it like fat ass disease or something. That's what he mm-hmm. called it. But he was. He's the best. But he always had. He had this a, a very good quote where he's like, if a comedian's trying to be funny, a funny joke and a non funny joke come from the same place of trying to be funny. Mm-hmm. And if it's not funny, you'll you can they'll it's okay to let them know. But it's like the intent is really one of those things where you're like, what's the intention? And then that type of thing, you felt like. The, the reason why a lot of people didn't like that is because it did feel like Matt Rife was doing that on purpose to be edgy. Like, I'm an edgelord. I didn't feel it real. <laughs> Matt Rife was very catered to women, and then he started making women jokes to, like, try and cater to men. And yeah. then men were like, eh, no. <laughs> yeah. You're hot. Shut up. <laughs> like, ew, we don't want you. Um, yeah. I, I'm obviously a woman. I'm a woman, like, a very woman, like, woman advocate, I guess. Yeah. But, like, the kitchen jokes and stuff like that don't, like. They're just boring. Yeah, like you, these were probably funny a hundred years ago, but yeah. now it's just kind of like you're dumb. But um, I was in an abusive relationship, and I just don't find those jokes funny. No, I don't blame you. I and, mean, we all have we all have certain things that you know triggering things or certain things that like affect us in a negative way. Like I hate hearing jokes about like taking my wife because I can't take one. I can't take my wife anymore. Take my wife, please. <laughs> we're back. <laughs> <laughs> she can't stand me. I well, I can't. So I can't even do accents on the show because if I do like a funny accent, do she it. Gets mad at me. Do something on. funny that's not racist. <laughs> then we're back. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> They're all you can't do. I mean, I can only do like white. Like I was talking on the phone with uh, Brian earlier, uh, and I was doing. I, you have to do white. You have to do white version. So I had to do like, "Hey, mate, how you doing?" Like we were doing this back and forth, like that type yeah, of thing. Yeah. And so he was doing it back to me, and I was, he was like, "What do you? What, when's the podcast?" I was like, 2 p.m." He's like, "Who are you having on?" I was like, "Jeff and his wife Nikki." And he was like, "That's exciting! You're having comedians on a comedy show." I'm like, "I know, right?" <laughs> About time. <laughs> we typically don't have comedians on. We we have <laughs> randoms, dude. We had a, we had a magician on here multiple times. She got mad because she was a magician. You ever had so a, mad. had a hypnotist? <gasps> I don't know I if he does one. that. We need that though. Yeah. We had a we had a couple of OnlyFans girls on here, and they we hypnotized me. Girls. Just kidding. We did I have a couple girls. OnlyFans during COVID. Hell yeah! Did you? you have to. It was like that was the time to do it. It was. It like, was. like I my my partner at the time let me do it, and I I made a lot of fucking money. Yeah, you can make money quick. Shit, we Get wanted to go quick. to dinner the other day, and I made fifty dollars just selling a guy some booby pictures. Nice. Fuck yeah! Dude. I was actually the first OnlyFans model. People don't know this, but yeah. <laughs> when I got out of the Marine Corps, I was really in shape. I used to work out out in my yard. And yeah. Neighbor used to sit in a lawn chair and take pictures. Yeah. He was my only fan. But <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that was the wrong one. Sorry. <laughs> now it looks like I fucked it up. I was trying dick. to press this one. I have that one right next to it. I do that typically when she talks. I'm just like when she says something, I'm just like <laughs> 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 and we hate each other. It. It's great. Yeah, yeah. I love this stuff. That's my favorite. I love uh, to me it's like I the corny or the joke like if you can do a corny joke and sell it it's the best especially like when you go like you ever get you guys know Randy Meyer yes yeah he locally he's got some of the most corniest jokes in the whole world but I would love to listen to him talk to him all day he's because the he's principal, so funny. right the principal of Eastern yeah, yeah he's, he, just, I, he's he's really good and I like how he, a lot of his comedy is about being a principal yeah yeah and he takes what he's awesome. doing you know yeah. what I mean and does it is there anything that you do with your job that you're like I gotta bring this here is it, or is it just like the depression. 
like <laughs> my where I work. That's how I use my work jokes. Or just my depre- I just use them as depression jokes. <laughs> I basically it. drive a fork truck. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, we same. You got a boombox yeah. in the back. Uh, I better not comment okay. on that. No so comment. Fork, fork We're not certified? supposed to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, there's a guy at work that has a boombox on his fork on his fork truck. I have a boombox on my fork truck. It's like every time he turns around, it's like there goes my hero. Say, it's same, except it's like Spice Girls. Yeah. Let's be honest, at Chrysler, that's not like the most surprising thing. No, to find on a fucking no. Truck. No, you're just happy they're not nodding out. I don't know. I've never been matters. there. <laughs> on some I've never been to Chrysler. Uh, I when I got hired in, they were talking about somebody had fucking hundreds of dollars of drugs they just left on their fork truck and oh, were yeah. planning on coming back into work the next day to sell it. And like they got arrested or something. I was like, yeah, there was yeah. a huge deal I heard at the plant locally that I do not work at. That um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not affiliated in any way with those people. Yeah, throw that on there just to remind myself not to. I'm just kidding. No, but uh, yeah, there was a here was a huge thing that came out that they were like, well, they found a, in a department they were tearing down. They found like a, a, a I think it was like a fucking what are they like locker, like a mm-hmm. locker is that what those are called a locker, a locker, a locker. They found a locker and they opened it up because it had been locked for like a year or two because the department was shut down and they were like moving things down. They opened it up and it was just like drugs. Drugs and drugs and drugs. And I was like, I wish I would have found that locker first. Right. Am I right? Um, my ex actually found a brand new bag of gummies outside gate. Uh, actually, I'm not going to say the yeah. gate. But outside one of the gates. And he brought it home. He's like, look at what I found. Yeah. I was like, hell yeah, you're going to share that with me, right? Now he left them in the, his truck. They got melted together. And then him and his so friends. A mega gummy. Yeah. Him and his friends went uh, bow fishing and ate them. So it was like just a whole bunch of like. They were high. <laughs> and I was like, you fucking bitch. Like, I wanted some of that. I found a vape the other day. It was on the ground? It was sitting on the break table. So you... Did you just take it? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, I found who it belonged to and I gave it back because everybody at work needs to be high. Yeah, yeah. So what it Except is. for me. What, where do you work at? Um, I'm not Walmart legally Super obligated. Center? The Walmart to... Center? Yes. Okay. Walmart Distribution Center. Oh, that's, that makes sense. I work at the uh, the, the gas city distribution did you like yeah. sanitize yeah. it before you took it no. I didn't use it uh, no yeah I knew who it, I, I gave it to somebody who knew who it belonged to but uh, was it a weed pen or yeah it? it was a weed pen yeah. oh, shit, but but then I had to start teaching <laughs> then I ended up uh, teaching one of my co-workers about them she's like how do you know it's not nicotine I'm like well and I started explain Smelling. like <laughs> hit yeah. it and find out yeah yeah <laughs> I've always wanted Adderall yeah you can get. I can get you Random. some from work. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Now we've got her selling drugs on the. Podcast. Was that your locker? <laughs> no. I'm not telling nobody nothing. I'm not gonna say where it came from, but I'm pretty sure I have an Adderall pill in the back seat of my car. Yeah. I went to a party last night, and my friend was trying to take his meds, and yeah, he dropped one, and they couldn't find it. Didn't so. you say you wanted me to clean out your car today? <laughs> Didn't you say you weren't going to say where it came from? <laughs> and then she was like, actually, she was at a party a friend of mine put a drop in the Well, yeah, yeah. I didn't say who. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or what party. You know who you are. Chaz. No, Chance? Chance, it was no, you. No, it wasn't him. Was <laughs> he's in Georgia. Oh, he's in Georgia. That would have been a hell of a Duh. party. Duh. He moved to Georgia. Of course. Last yeah. night, after he dropped his meds. Yeah. He was like, well, lost my he's, meds. I'm going to Georgia. Fuck he's it. just over it. Yeah. He hasn't had his Adderall medicine or his ADHD medicine in a while, so we had to leave. Wow. Yeah. I, I actually... Before I ever smoked marijuana in my life, I had taken Adderall. And it wasn't even prescribed. Somebody gave it to me at work, and we were, like, cleaning, and I was like, oh, this shit's fucking working, dude. I was like... <laughs> I took half an Adderall once, and I was up for, like, 42 fucking hours and wouldn't shut up. <laughs> it's rough, dude. I'm prescribed Adderall. I took some, and it made me normal. <laughs> Yeah, my kid was like, I think I have ADD, Dad. I was like, you just want Adderall. Get away from me. (laughs) I actually asked my doctor to test me because I wanted to get – because a lot of times I need – in order to focus, I need, like, caffeine or something. And he tested me. said, yeah, you you could use AD or Adderall, but I want you to manage it with energy drinks, so – yeah. That's even worse. He's like a coke addict when it comes to energy yeah. drinks. I'm, I'm not like, kidding. It's what's your like, favorite ones? Where's my energy drink? Probably the five hour energy drinks, mm. the extra strength. I'm like a 20 year old girl at Starbucks. You're going to have a heart attack. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying, especially with his age. Yeah. That's when you're supposed to. Oh, my bad. 
There we go. Right. I need to put some buttons over there for you guys. <laughs> we can all play with the buttons today. You know what Not I mean? Not fair that you get all the buttons. I know. I can want, want, want. I know, right? <laughs> My fiance has a button. She keeps telling me to find it. I can't find it. No matter where I go. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Her oh, vagina well. clitoris. That's what I'm talking about. I think it's called a clitoris. <laughs> Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about your comedy shows. I know we're we're gonna goof. This is a comedy podcast, people. If you're not here to joke, then what are you here for? But we've got a show here. Sorry, we couldn't process your comedy show. This looks kind of fun. Let's talk about this a little bit. So uh, this is in Art Deco Saloon, Peru, yes. Illinois. Yep, it's uh, it's. I lived in Peru, Indiana. For Holy two shit, years. that's you. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Holy, Holy shit. she took that picture. Yeah, that yeah, was good. She's a good she's, photographer. That's on my favorite one. Yeah. My favorite one's actually on my phone right now. There you go. So you're going to be there. Uh, the headliner's going to be Anthony Hernandez. Yes. Um, bad credit comedy. Oh, I probably need to go there. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's good. Here's another one. This is my all-time favorite. Hang on. Sorry, I've got a million of these, apparently. You're going to see her butthole. She's like, uh-oh. Oh, oh I go. like it. He's like, hey, you, your turn, please. I, I just that's my time. That's the, that's my time pose. All right, that's my time, people. Here, take this mic before I get kicked out. Jordan did all my headshots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Maddie. Um, that's her, man. So, uh, No Shod Bar Bar Barrow? No Shod Barrow. He looks pretty funny. I like those dreads. Do you know any of these people on here? No, I don't. That's what's neat about actually. Uh, we Marsh met the one guy, Marshall, with the cowboy hat. Marshall Lothar. I met him at my the show I did last month, Damn. where I headlined. He's uh, straight out of fucking Red Dead with that hat, dude. <laughs> it's pretty. Just cool. imagine him walking out being like, "It's all right, boy." You know what I mean? <laughs> we don't do that. Yeah, I know. That's her. That's her. That's her kink with Maddie. He does that. He does that girl, voice. To her. Right, girl. Girl. Right, girl. <laughs> I wouldn't call this a kink, but my ex used to do this thing to me sometimes where he'd like pat my head and be like, You're a good girl. <laughs> I'm a good girl all the time too. And I told Jeff and he's like, Well, now I know how to get it. Yeah. <laughs> it just sucks for us uh, short people because we had to get a step stool to be like, doo, 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 doo. You're all right, girl. <laughs> <laughs> just like rub my head like it doesn't work when you're shorter. Yeah, it doesn't, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta like bend down, please. Thank you. Thank you. Maddie's taller yeah. than me, though. Yeah. Maddie's taller than me too. I just get on my get on my knees and yeah, see, he's not gonna he's not gonna say nothing about. It. He's like, go ahead, yeah, absolutely. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Good girl. girl. <laughs> so you just recently started doing comedy, Nick, right? Yeah. How 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 do you like it? I like it. Um, I started doing it in like August. Yeah. Um, and then I hadn't done it after one of my best friends passed away, and then um a couple a couple times within the last month I started doing it again, but I tried to remember it like off the top of my head. Not looking at my book for like four. Oh months. yeah, nope. But uh, I like it. It's fun. I most of my jokes I came up with at Chrysler this organ. Yeah, yeah. And I tell it to the people I was working with, and they think it was funny, or they thought I was ridiculous. Yeah. They're like, yeah. we're just gonna say yes. And maybe she'll shut up. Well, Courtney uh, put on Facebook if she got a hundred reactions, hundred likes, that she would do her first comedy set on stage. No, I said I would write it. No, don't try to fucking. She's trying to like finagle it. Like, ooh, I'm gonna lawyer. I got a lawyer coming on. I'm gonna, gonna fact check us. you. Yeah, fact checker. I'm gonna go to your Facebook and. It said 100 likes, and I'll write my own comedy set. Yeah, and but the, and with the implication that if you write a comedy set on stage, we all knew what you. Don't try to change it. Oh you should God. do it. Yeah, that's why. That's I one of the reasons easy. I like, wanted to bring see. you guys in here is because I know you do comedy. I've been on stage. You're kind of new, but you do comedy as well. So maybe like give her some tips. It's really tips? easy. Like he told me anything I think's funny, write it down. But even sometimes, like I say the joke in my head enough, I remember. Like he was going through a box of stuff in our kitchen while I was cleaning, and he likes to procrastinate. Yeah. And uh, he had pulled out an envelope that had his first haircut in it. And I thought, first it, well, I thought it was cute because his mom died when he was like 12. And I yeah. thought it was cute that he still yeah. had it. And then he pulled out the second one. My second haircut. And then his third one. Oh. And at oh. some point, it's no oh. longer cute. It's, it's like a weird cute. fetish. That's, that's <laughs> odd. <laughs> yeah. That's a funny bit. I like I that. Was, <laughs> there was one point where I was in my, I went to my mom's bedroom to go clean or to go change my bathing suit because that's where she always, she has a pool. So that's where we go change. And I looked down on the floor and all of my baby teeth were on the floor. <laughs> oh, yeah, they did that too. Yeah, and I'm like, mom. What the fuck? I thought the tooth fairy was real, for one. <laughs> Why do you have all my teeth just in your room on the floor? 
And then all of a sudden, A and E came in. It's like on this episode of Biological Hoarders, we find people <laughs> who keep their kids' bodily things. That's crazy. With but, teeth and but hair. But I and kept my kids' teeth, and then it got stolen. Yeah. So stole somebody. Your they, <laughs> <laughs> See? They just See? walked in her house and was like, "That's a flat screen TV." I want, I want the teeth. teeth. Yeah. No, they stole. Oh, they tooth stole fairy this. came in. Was like, mm, I heard there's some teeth. They stole this giant fireplace thing that had a like a, a, drawer. a drawer in it, and like nobody's gonna think I'm gonna check this fireplace drawer. So that's where I would hide all my kids' yeah. teeth and their like old jewelry and stuff that they like. Those things are fucking heavy. Imagine stealing a fireplace. They stole my fucking fireplace <laughs> and they stole my refrigerator and my <laughs> stove. Like at this point, did they steal it or did you just leave it abandoned? Because because how long would it take for them to do that? I wish well, they it was when I was my piano. when it was stored at my stepdad's house mm. and he was using all my dildos. That's that. That's a great. That's a great segue. Your into dad was using your dildos? my ex stepdad, my mom's ex husband. Long dildos. story. Yeah, it's a long story, but he stole all of her sex. But all my kids' things. baby teeth got Hell, stolen. Where in dildo store? Yeah. I was with this guy in high school that was like significantly older than me. Yeah. And he lived in his Seems like a pattern. Yeah. Go ahead. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, we we were staying in his grandpa's old house and he's cleaning it out. And under his bed, we found like this huge like watermelon colored fucking dildo. And I was like, oh my God, Papa was dirty. <laughs> and I touched that thing not knowing that it was under yeah. there. It was these guys. Watermelon? It was color? like red, white, and green. Okay, like, yeah. It reminded me of Maybe a watermelon. Maybe it's Mexican, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was a burrito. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was the Mexican flag. It wasn't the. I was like, uh, I'm glad your grandpa's been dead for a long time. Yeah. She was yeah. A fucking ass or <laughs> pussy was his dead. No. Yeah. Well, that was like when I was a kid. We, you know, our, my mom had like a water bed, which is fucking weird. I've tried. We that. also have water it's beds. A, I have a hard time having sex on a regular bed. Now you fucking put me in the ocean. I'm like, fucking, <laughs> I guess it might help, depend on how, like, you know. Uh, Go with the wave. <laughs> yeah, you have to ride the wave. I would tell you my story, but I think it would be bad. But anyway, she. I mean, you can tell me after this. But okay. there was on the side. She, my mom had drawers, and on her side of the bed, it was all like lingerie. So that's normal. I can just, you know. But then on his side of the bed, it was like sex toys. So. When we'd have friends over, we'd make a joke like we'd go in there. Hey, did you see this? And then one day we went in there, we found a strap on him. We're like, hold up, we're not gonna do this anymore. Hold up, hey. <laughs> my stepdad's getting his butthole fucked. Um, yeah, it was There's very awkward. Wrong with that. I mean, it's I mean, it's fine. We don't but, laugh um, at that anymore. I laughed at it because you know you don't you don't know him. He he's probably homophobic. <laughs> <laughs> so to imagine him being like, oh, you know. See, my stepdad when my mom were together, we we I found this one in the drawer. It was like. It was like this. It looked like it was like this long. It had a hole in the middle, and then it had like rabbit ears. And I and but it had a plug in, and it was the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in it my seems life. Like it goes around a penis, though, right? It does. And then it did. Rabbit is but like, it. just it just seemed very odd. But it like as a plug in. Now was very. I know you're like, Yeah, it was. Ve it was very odd. I know what a toy with a rabbit looks like, and yeah. then you said it was like it was it, almost like a pocket pussy. It, it was like rabbit. Thing. It was like long <laughs> and it had a hole in the middle and then it had like rabbit ears over here and I was like, yeah, I went cross-eyed when you were explaining. I was like, what the fuck? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I get. It. No, it I'm makes really... sense. It makes sense. But imagine yeah. you're like, you got this thing on your dick, but you also got it plugged into the wall. Yeah. It probably vibrates. I don't have to imagine. Later tonight, I'm going to be procrastinating. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, he procrastinates. So I was like, has he? Ever, or you said he procrastinates, and I was like, procrastinating. You, procrastinate? <laughs> you ever heard of procrastinating? No, where you have something important you have to do, and instead you decide to masturbate. Like, I do that I every oh, okay, day well. for work. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I do it all the time. Probably. <laughs> That's why I was late here. Damn it. You have to, dude. <laughs> Just to keep the stamina up for y'all. <laughs> like, uh, do you want 45 seconds every time? Or... <laughs> I gotta dull the pain. <laughs> anyway, like random stories like that is what kind of helps with my uh, right. comedy. But mm -hmm. most of mine are influences from him. My thing is more so like this being on stage. No, yeah. I'm not good in. Front I don't of make people. eye contact. I literally will look above everybody's head. Yeah, she's not used to being on stage unless there's a pole that she can spin around. Yeah, and the yeah. Same. You know, yeah. they <laughs> tell you to imagine the audience is naked when you're on yeah. stage, but she was about don't... to leave me hanging. He put his hand up. Rude. <laughs> that don't work for me. I always imagine I'm naked, then I just feel like I'm at home in yeah. my room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was it? Procrastinating. Procrastinating. So you anyway, let's go back that to too much, though. March 2nd at uh, Art Deco Saloon in Peru, Indiana. Tickets are Illinois. $10. Purdue, oh, Illinois, my bad. I think it's in Indiana because we do it. And then you can hit that down there if you need, need tickets. Go ahead right now. Screenshot it. All right, then. Okay, and then we have another show. You have another show that you have on here as well. It's the same people. Bad Credit. 
comedy, man. We need to meet these people. They're killing it out here. And the show is with Dan Alton, who we just had. Yes. Well, yeah, he is hilarious. So that's a great one. And uh, uh, I don't know the other guys. They're probably amazing as well, too. But yeah. uh, Angel Scott, Kenley McClure. She's from Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Really There's fun. a lot of names on here, dude. I think yes. she goes to Crackers. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. I, I prefer Caucasian, but you said whatever you <laughs> she want. Was. Dude, fucking uh, I think what? she was a waitress there and then started doing comedy is what I heard. That's good. But there's so many names on here. Do you, How many, like, do they just, like, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes? I don't know. Uh, the first, the first show I did I ran know. long. So uh, it's like 7 p.m. And they, they're like, we do not own the rights to this. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Is that the name of like the, the show? Yeah. They like funny names, dude. They've got, you know, we could, sorry, we couldn't process your comedy show. <laughs> and we do not own the rights to this comedy show. They just like, they just like to set it up. But Dan Alton, oh my God. He's hilarious. That dude. Oh my God. Brian always ends up, I, I'm always so surprised because Brian books all the comedians for the show typically. And uh, the last time, the last show we did, we had Dan Alton, he headlined, and then our feature was Julie Heckman. And I don't know if you know Julie. Yeah. Holy shit, she was so funny, and I, I'm always so surprised. Was that the one you guys did at the uh, yeah. music store? store? Is that the one you guys went to? Did you mm-hmm. guys go to the last one? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. The one where the guy was talking in the middle of my set? Was that the one, or did you guys go to the one before that? I don't remember anybody talking. Okay, so maybe it was Patrick Murray. Did you guys see Patrick Murray? No. No? Was it Dan? Yeah. I think it was Dan Alton, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there was. I was when I was doing my setups. There, there it was, was the guy. Halloween one, right? Because I wasn't wearing pants. Yeah, because you were Barnacle Boy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't care. I thought yeah. that was awesome. Yeah, they killed it. Dude. I didn't know it was a costume thing, or I would have worn my costume. Yeah, we were doing like a uh, what do we call it? Clearance Halloween yeah. party, it's like you know, Halloween show. Yeah. We didn't want to do something on Halloween weekend because people already had like fifty thousand plans. He didn't tell me, and, and I was like, "What the hell? I could rock that shit." You, you could have just not wore pants too. Yeah, I just used that excuse. Good job. Nice. See? A lot of high fives. I got you back. <laughs> well, we can high five. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> <Can't reach. laughs> no, this is awesome though. I love I love the way this is set up. And Dan's hilarious. Jeff, you're going to be there. That's exciting. May 11th. So you got a show March 2nd and then May 11th. So yep. check those out. If you're looking to go check out some comedy in Illinois, um, this one's Ch- uh, Chillicotta. Chillicothe. Chillicothe. Yep. Chillicothe. That sounds. I like the way you said it. Chillicothe. <laughs> Chillicote, Illinois. That sounds like now I'm doing a racist accent again. See? Stop it. I was just trying to say a word and it became racist. Chillicothe, Ohio, too, ain't there? There probably is. I like comparing towns and different. Yeah. I bet Chili. there's a Peru, Alabama. There, I bet there is. That, it's like Springfield in every state, and there, like Springfield in every state, and then Illinois is like, let's make that our capital. Like, <laughs> I was thinking, like, yeah. Alabama, like, maybe actually I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Alabama, Alaska, Arizona. You guys ever do that song back when you were kids? No? Yes. Do you, know, you know the whole song? You? Yeah. I'm 45. You fucking liar. I'm 36. I was going to say, I definitely didn't do that song then because no? I'm, I'm going to be 26. You're going to be 26. So we're 10 years I feel old. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's like I'm 30. 35. Yeah. I'm 56. He's 30 years old. If I knew you better, I was going to make a joke and say, hey, here, Jeff's here with his child bride. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hey, it's okay. You literally yeah. share some of my beds. Yeah, they got good. I don't think so. I would. You I need to come do a show. I want to see you at the open mic. If you get, I know. I you, mean, I'll probably come to your open mic, but I don't come have get even like ten minutes of material. To you don't even have how much? Show. Five? You don't have five? I have like five. That's all we. That's all we're. we're our spots are only like five to ten. Mm-hmm. So if you get up there and you want to do five, there's no pressure. Like I said, we're just hanging out, dude. All my song, all my shit sucks. So I've got. It really nothing. does. I suck so. Bad. <laughs> He's a really bad comedian. Yeah. No, Not I don't. Funny. I kind of remember your comedy, but I remember Brian really impressed me. Oh yeah, Brian's I didn't expect crazy. him to be He's... as funny as he was. Yeah. And I worked with him because he was kind of quiet, and I just talked all the time to him. Yeah. And I'm like. He only really knows me because of Jeff, and he probably thinks I'm some crazy lady. He's going to out to him all night. But like. Brian's, in my opinion, and, and that's just, and it's not very, it's an unfair opinion, but he's my favorite comedian. He's awesome. Ever. Like, he's so good. I think he's so he's so funny. So, Brian's my favorite comedian. Not Brian is, my is funny in person. Like Yeah, he's always hilarious. That's why, like, when he has when he comes on the podcast, he's funny. Like, he's just a funny guy. Not he, saying you weren't impressive. No, no. Anything, I, but, like, I, I had a horrible show. I, I, I knew him, and I just didn't know that he was that funny. Oh, like, yeah. And I was oh, like, I had a horrible show. Like, his mom jokes that he had about his uh. mom were just <laughs> killed. Like, he, he killed it. I think he said, um, I, I don't want to give away anything. He's got some stuff he's going to be doing at the open mic because he's going to be hosting, I think, this the first one. And he's going to I kind of, kind of you know, close it kind of just because it's him. But um, it's going to be really funny. I'm excited to have him there. We send each other jokes. Sean is one of the, Sean Delrompo is one of the people we send each other jokes all the time to like help each other punch up and throw tags on. And it's just, it's a really good, we have a really good, uh, uh, 
what do you call it? Like a, a good rapport. Rapport. That's actually the exact word I was looking for. We have a good. He's a walking today. dictionary. I love that dude. Do you know what coitus Man. is? Yeah. Yes. Where you're eating pussy. I used that in a conversation at dinner with friends I don't the think other that's night. That's the exact. Is that on there? I thought. I and I didn't pussy. know that was out of bad taste. That's how. Is coitus that, is just is like. Is that in the dictionary? Isn't it just oral sex? I learned it off I Big thought, Bang Theory. I thought so coitus I, was I can't just normal say. sex. Is it? Yeah. It was just sex. And you're over here getting in depth. Cunnilingus is. Or oh yeah, that one's happen. definitely. What is coit? Yeah, coitus is sex. Coitus You're absolutely sex. right. Yeah, I know that now. I was like, my you head just went in depth. Like, yep, it's eating pussy. Yeah, yeah, eating pussy. I'm just kidding. My <laughs> son's in the next room. Like, what the fuck is my dad doing, dude? <laughs> I'm so sick of it. Every day he's in there yelling about it. You aren't even here, and I'm yelling about it. <laughs> what are you doing? That's not how you do it. I'm watching and doing a play by play. Hey, we're here with Marv Albert, and we're talking about eating pussy. <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't do you don't do any sports anyway. No. <laughs> All right, the big bang. I do I'm lots just, of sports, we'll but right they're right. at home. Yeah. Water sports is not sports. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she always get peed on. Um, I'm just kidding. So, oh, yeah, you got two comedy shows in Illinois. Man, we got to get you more in Indiana over here. Yeah, I'm hoping to this year. Yeah. I know everybody that, like, we have a big group of friends that we, like, party with, and um, they always want to know when his shows are in the last three or in out of state. Yeah, you gotta drive. He's like, wow, that they're so that's so far away. That's if half the people came that say they want to see me, yeah. I could sell out a room. Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen your stand up. I also hilarious. can't go to, yeah. during when, on Wednesdays because yeah. I can't. If half the people came that like said they're gonna come see me, they'd fill up an entire jar. <laughs> I was gonna go dirty with it too. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Sorry, I'm gross. Artful interactions, 2024. It's coming up on Saturday, April 20th from 3 to 7 p.m. at Rhine Hall. That's 507 North Union Street here in Kokomo. There's going to be over 25 vendors, live music, food, drinks, and even raffle prizes. It's only a $5 general admission fee and five and under get in free. Can you believe that? There's also various VIP tickets, including a $15 ticket, a $25 ticket, and a $40 ticket. They are all tiered packages, and you get special seating during the event. And the best part is it's co-benefiting the Kokomo Rescue Mission. Tickets are available at www.creativeoddiesandcuriosities.com or you can call 765-513-8703 to get your tickets today. You do not want to miss Artful Interactions 2024 on Saturday, April 20th from 3 to 7 p.m. at Rhine Hall. Hope to see you there. Let's get us a couple topics here. I got some funny things. Did you guys hear um, that Shane Gillis? You guys, are you guys interested in Shane Gillis? Oh, well? he's awesome. I love Shane Gillis. He's going to be hosting SNL. They just announced that he's uh, going to be hosting SNL on February twenty fourth with uh, Twenty One Savage. I don't know who she's uh, Shane, Gillis. Shane Gillis. Uh, he is hilarious. This is him. He was oh, fired. That's the guy yes. that I really like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to be hosting SNL. Well, the interesting thing is he was fired. You know, mm-hmm. it, it, that's how he came to fame. Is he got fired from SNL mm-hmm. for uh, a uh, racist? He used the C H I N K word talking about. Uh, uh, Chinese people in Chinatown and got in trouble for that, and so he got removed, and now he's going to be hosting, which is kind of crazy, right? Like, you know, you're resp- that he was in 2019. He was like hired, and hours later, somebody found something on him. Oh yeah, it was. Like, a, it come was, on, man. Well, when you do comedy, when you do the type of comedy, he worked in a group in New York because he's from Philly. And, but he worked in a, with a group in New York that kind of do blue stuff. They're very blue, especially as far as like the Legion of Skanks. I don't know if you guys have heard of them. Mm. Uh, Luis J. Gomez. Um, I know a Legion of Skanks, yeah, but yeah. probably not the same one. <laughs> yeah, I know Legion of Skanks. That's my softball team. <laughs> my all women's softball team. No, uh, Legion of Skanks is the name of the, the LOS. Uh, her her actual uh, her her boyfriend actually played their skank fest in Indy. He met. Louis C.K. and that, like... I thought uh, he was going to say your softball team was... I need you to stop simping over my boyfriend. Simping, dude. He's my friend first. Before he was ever your boyfriend. Whatever. These are cute. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's that's where she puts those on there so he knows where to come. On my feet? Yeah. Hey, nothing wrong with a foot kink. Yeah, exactly. That's how our relationship started, honestly. There's a rule of no kink shaming on this podcast specifically. We don't kink shame. Yeah, so you know some feats, man. This is my, this is my holy Jeff, <laughs> dude. Hold on. Jeff's out here like, Sorry. get them doggies up here. <laughs> she's all of a sudden on camera. She's like, hold on. It's like, oh, my bad, bad, my bad. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. She's, I thought she, she, she came around. It's like she just pulled her tits out in here on the end. I didn't mean to get everybody excited. <laughs> She's like, let me pull them, let me pull them out of these crocs so we can get more comfortable. 
I love it, dude. I wish I had a cool you kink can put like it back that. Out. I do, okay. dude. It, it, being a foot, being a foot fetish person, it's like the best because it's like you might just see nudity and not even you're just hanging out at the beach and you're like, oh my god, it's like people are walking around with their dicks out. I think it's because I've always, for some reason, always attracted dominant women. I've been walked on so much. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. My best friend was in the hospital last year, and she said her feet hurt or something. I was like, rub her feet. Yeah. And later he's like, I can't believe you made me rub her feet. And I was like, <laughs> you like feet, though. He's like, yeah. She, didn't, she knew he liked seeing. Yeah. Just rub he's like, yeah, but now feet. I have to change my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, that's awesome, dude. I I, I, don't, I, I always joke around I don't have any fetishes because I, I want to have like a cool fetish. You have a fetish. What is it? Being gay. Yeah! <laughs> that is my fetish, is being gay. Anyway, Shane Gillis is actually going to be hosting SNL, which is pretty great. I'm excited. And I also want to do a, a, a happy Black History Month to Shane Gillis as well, because uh, he's a black man. But yeah, he also this week announced his paid partnership with Bud Light, and that caused a huge uproar in the internet community, because they're like, Shane's gay now, because he likes Bud Light, you know, because of the thing. I but like the, Bud Light, but yeah. I also think women are attractive, so I guess I... Yeah, you do not. You're not helping his case. Okay, you're actually hurting it, which I think is kind of cool. So he's had a couple of different things pop up where you know he's he's now the face of Bud Light, which is great. Him and Dylan Mulvaney. Yep. And then um, he's also going to be hosting SNL. So and he's like my favorite comedian, like one of my favorite like. Big I've, he's comedians. one of the guys on the reels I watch, and I earlier so I was funny. talking about him after. Um, Drew Lynch and I couldn't yeah. remember his name. Couldn't remember his name. That's awesome. I when love he that. does his Donald Trump impression. Oh my kills god, me, man! That's spot on. Beautiful dogs. <laughs> I love that. You guys see that special on Netflix? It's really. Good. I haven't watched it yet. Beautiful I'm... dogs. Oh my god! They're probably most of the reels you're seeing are clips from that where he's talking about his uncle, Uncle Danny, making that grilled cheese, Danny. Because it's was... on Netflix. Oh, dude, yeah, I have it's to so watch good. It. it is really good. Because he I... fucking kills me. Yeah, he has a special on YouTube that's for free as well. And I can't remember the name of that one. But um, he, the one on Netflix, it, they're both really good. But the one on Netflix is phenomenal. I think it's probably one of the better stand-ups that came out this last, like the stand-up specials that came out. Did you guys watch any stand-up specials in the last year that you were really impressed I used with? to watch a lot when before I um, got married. But... Yeah. Who's the uh, guy we went and saw? Chris Porter? Yeah, Chris Porter. That's he showed one. me some of his specials, and I thought he was hilarious. He's yeah. one of he's one of my absolute favorite. I got he, to meet him. He's cool. He's such a dick when he talks. Yeah, yeah. like uh, he tells a a joke about like when I sleep with this woman, she makes me sleep on this side because if somebody were break in and rape her, she would think I'd sleep through a rape. And he's just like, she'd think I'd sleep through a rape. And I'm like, Why so aggressive? I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, if you ever get a chance, check out "Ugly and Angry" by Chris Porter. Ugly Frickin and angry. It's classic. Yeah. I like that, dude. I'm excited. There's been a lot of really good uh, stand-up segments. A lot of weird ones, too. Like the Matt Reif one. The, it came out, and it started off weird. And then I never, I haven't finished all day. Did you guys watch the new Dave Chappelle one? I know that one. No, I out. used to love Dave Chappelle yeah, you just in high school. Got to be honest. Dave. I've never I've never watched him. No? I've seen I I've seen him host Saturday Night Live and thought it was hilarious. Oh, yeah. I just have so little time. I'm so busy. I don't get to really sit sit and watch a lot of. I think uh, Jimmy or somebody posted something on Facebook of one of Dave Chappelle's skits mm -hmm. of like his cocaine joke, and Jeff's like Jeff coming on and had no idea what they was talking about. <laughs> and uh, then there's like you can find the GIF. It's him in like a camo jacket. He's all like cracked out. And yeah, yeah. I think I shared it's, it. Uh, what's but... his name? Uh, Tyrone. Yeah. Tyrone. Uh, it's me, Tyrone. Oh man, I'm on crack. That kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, I love Tyrone. Uh, I used Tyrone Biggum a lot in high school. Yeah, when that came out, I was a uh, sophomore or a junior. Was that the Chappelle show? The Chappelle yeah. show. The Chappelle show. I did I was, watch that. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. Clayton Bigsby, the black white supremacist, uh, and then like Tyrone Biggums is the crack. Mm, it's a crack. Put some crack on it. Mm. It's like, Remember their uh, bit about uh, what's the what's the office store? The really pop, oh yeah 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 where they talk. <laughs> Fuck them. That's why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that skit. Yeah, yeah. That's something. Can I see your manager? Hi, I'm your manager. What's <laughs> up? Had the dude from uh, Half Baked in it. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. I, I, that whole entire like. I'm so sad that it only lasted two and a quarter season because that that last season, the last episode was all garbage. But I, I own them all on DVD. Yeah, that's how old I am, kids. DVD. I have VHSs. Yeah, yeah, I got rid of those. Yeah, I can't even find a VHS player anymore to transfer them to digital. I know. Totally my mom has a VHS player. Yeah. My mom is weird and has like. These random ass things that she shouldn't have. Yeah. 
I got kind of VHS. The VHS is in my attic. It was like my mom's old like buttons of steel. <laughs> uh, my favorite VHS movie that I watched was uh, Where's Polly? It's about a bird. Yeah. Oh yeah. Or a uh, peace dragon. Oh, you we used to have a shit ton of uh, of VHS when I was younger, but they did great over time. The problem with VHS is you you know eventually they just suck. Or you try to watch the Titanic and you gotta watch them like six fucking VHS. <laughs> yeah, she puts her fucking hand on the the thing and she's going down and then it's like, please put in. You know. Yeah. I was like, he's putting something in. I have to put something in. We're all putting something in. <laughs> Fuck. I used to watch that on VHS all the time yeah. when I was yeah. a kid. Yeah. I don't know. I really like the Titanic. They should have put that on death. the. They should have put that on like Netflix because they put t- Titanic on there. You should have a part one and part two just to be a dick. Be yeah. <laughs> you're like watching it. And you're like insert second half or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You guys into any Netflix shows or any TV shows? I know you you have enough time for anything. Right? I love Apple TV. Yeah. That's what do you watch on my? There? I just finished watching the Godzilla Monarch, which yeah. is freaking good. Yeah. It was um, good. Yeah. I love for all mankind. Yeah, I I, I, I want to get her... so hard to get into that. Really? Yeah. I could not. Joel Kinnaman, right? Yeah. I tried so fucking hard to get in that because the concept's amazing. Like, we got beat in the space race, and I love history stuff. Yeah. And it's like, because they did that, they had that uh, series on Prime, like if Hitler won. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. It's then it called, became like a time series. All it's a uh, man in the high castle. Yeah. yeah. Philip I K. Tried Dick to, novel. I couldn't do it. Philip what? A Philip K. Do you Dick. You want to fill up my what? <laughs> 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 no, I was just like, uh, I, I tried to watch that too, and I got through a couple episodes. Same with. Uh, What's the weird one that women fucking are always obsessed with about the girls who are Puritans? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, Handmaid's Tale. Yeah, women love that fucking show, dude. You ever seen that? I've never seen it. That's why I've you seen got, it. That's why you guys are funny. Cause you I've honestly, seen it. Sorry. Yeah, I'm just See, I love, I love really good drama. drama. But I yeah. read the book. But I cry like... I, I have a tendency to... My eye waters, actually. I don't yeah. cry. He does. But she thinks I cry, and he I have to... cry, though. Yeah. We it's... watched The Whale. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and he was like... Don't think I'm a pussy if I start crying, and then I'm not gonna ruin the movie if you've ever seen. Yeah, yeah he does. But it was sad. He dies. Yeah, I was so Spoiler sad. Spoiler he's dead, dude. He's well. I mean, the whole concept is that he's like gonna die. Really overweight and gonna die. Yeah. If I watch Bubba or uh, Forrest Gump when yeah. Bubba dies, every time I'm like, <laughs> yeah. he, he hasn't seen My Girl, and he oh, didn't dude. understand a reference that one of our friends put on Facebook, and I was like, you've never seen My Girl. You want to see? He can't see without his glasses. <laughs> yeah. Schindler's <laughs> List. I ball all the way through that movie. It's. I, I laughed the whole time. The, <laughs> it's a horrible movie. I can't. I I don't mind watching like the. I, I love history, so I don't mind watching like movies about history. But then those types where they're just purposely the score is set up that way. They do the story set up. They're like they. You better fucking cry or you're <laughs> not human. And it's like, oh. like did you watch Severance on? Uh, yes. Apple. Good. That is show. freaking awesome. They just what are they going to do this season two, season two they just man? Filming it. Yeah, that's that is the most incredible cliffhanger. Amazing. Ending. And I'm trying to get her to watch it. Oh, dude, you haven't watched it? It's Severance oh. is really good. I'm watching a lot of stuff right now. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm watching Game of Thrones for the third, third or fourth time. Okay, now. well, because I haven't seen it. Because he's never watched uh, it. Um, I, she I'm made in... me watch it. It was fucking horrible. I she didn't okay, like it. No, it wasn't horrible until season eight. Which, yeah, which like, I, but I mean, if if you go like if you go to see a comedian and they're good the whole time, and then the last like like you know, what do we want to say? The last ten minutes are horrible. You're you can't talk to Jordan about Game of Thrones. Yeah, but you can like if you know it sucks. Yeah. You get... Okay, so what I've learned is it sucked when I first watched it, and then the more I watch it, it's like oh, it's really not that bad. But because it is a series, if you want to watch it again, you can be like, oh, I know this is where it's gonna suck, and just shut it off. Yeah, yeah that's true. But then you don't have any like why? No, what's so like, bad finish. about it? You'll. F- it, it's just they a lot of people no, think don't they, ruin I'm it. not gonna ruin it they just she think t- a lot of people rushed the last it was very rushed I point. hated King Jeffrey okay Joffrey. I wanted to see Joffrey. this Joffrey. Joffrey I wanted to see this dude die and I asked her I said please tell me does he die and she's like he nope he lives I told him he lives like, all the way to the end and then I finally got to the episode where he dies and I'm like <laughs> and it was really great right it was awesome it was but if she told you that it would have been less cool what well, even was great. Though, what was really great was uh the red wedding uh, I was you lose your shit? And, uh we were watching like, it and I was like I think this is an episode I really want you to see and after it happens he's like what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. You turn around and you're like, did they just fucking, why? And now he's like, they murdered half the cast. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, they have eight seasons. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Oh. That was like what they were known for. My biggest problem with Game of Thrones is it's very formulaic to the point where like, you know, like it, you know, it's not that you know what's going to happen, but they're so formulaic that you're like, man, this is purposely created to keep you watching. Like it's not made to be a good show, even if it is. 
certain parts, but it's meant to keep you watching. Like the first fucking episode, the kid being thrown out the window. And they're like, end of episode. You're like, go oh, fuck yourself. I know what you're doing. It's just, it's basically like daytime television, but with like it's like you know days of our lives. Shut up. It's what it is. It's days of our kind fucking of. lives. He has a good it point is, right? now that I'm thinking about it, it like that. It's like it's not. Uh, you're you're waiting like on it. your next episode to come out, and you gotta wait like two Wednesdays when you were a kid. You know, yeah. every show your show yeah. came out. Every I like. It's one of those shows that you can like. There's like a community of people that you can like talk to about yeah. it. Yeah. What did you think of Westworld? Westworld's great. I, I mean, watched the first season. Have, amazing. Have Second been... season's decent. Uh, then it gets weird, but true, it's still good. How about True Detective? True Detective with, with the women? No, uh, I'm probably Matthew McConaughey. Uh, yeah, Ma- Matthew McConaughey and uh, I haven't watched that. Christian yet. Bale. I want to see it. I want. Is it? The, isn't it? Wasn't there a movie first, or is that always been a? TV I don't show? think so. But the what? first season was. He went to say Matthew, and he said Matthew. Matthew. <laughs> Matthew It almost sounds like he tried to make an accent, but he fucked yeah. up and said, Inside Mom. the acting studio with <laughs> Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey. I've always been an Anglophile. <laughs> hey, don't say that on the show. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anything with file gets scary. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've no, watched I love X-Files it. before. Have you ever watched that? Oh, yeah. I never. I, my buddy was obsessed with X-Files growing up. I and, couldn't get into it. Yeah. And I'm a big UFO buff. I actually want your poster. Uh, yeah. So it's actually a quote from a uh, it's a quote from a uh, um, an artist of a com or not a, a fucking musical artist named Frank Ocean. He's my favorite. He's a gay man. I like Frank Ocean. Like you. Like me. We have an alien in our house. It's the hands and the face. Yeah. It was his, and um, our house is kind of like Halloween decorated because I. Oh yeah. Spooky. I so badly want aliens to exist. But uh, I know, right? When we moved in, they had this weird. They had like this weird cutout in the wall, like a circle. Where I thought, like, maybe they took the wiring for your TV on a mount to go down in. Mm-hmm. But it leads into the spare room, into the closet. Which is kind of crazy. <laughs> so he showed me this alien guy, and I was like, oh, my God, I know where that would be cool to put yeah. right now until, like, we fix it. She was like, go, he was like, go on the other side, open your mouth, close your eyes. <laughs> he was a glory <laughs> hole, yeah. Kind of, it's all for him. Damn it. You got to get a step to it. That's why I walk around with one. But we have his little ghost, or his little alien head on this hole right here. It's just perfect. <laughs> Uh, you guys, you guys ever heard of Natasha Leggero? She's a comedian as well. She's uh, she's pretty, she's pretty big out there. She followed Burt Kreischer on, yeah, at the comedy. I heard store, about that. And she ripped off her, and because he takes his shirt off and has his tits out, so she's like, "I'm gonna do it too." It's a huge story that popped up. Obviously, they they it's she is blurred a out. Uh-huh. She pulled them titties out. Like, I thought that was pretty cool. And everybody was like, "Ah, oh, you can't put that out there." And I'm like, "Absolutely, you can, man. If he can do it, why can't she?" Am I right? Free the titties. I agree. Right. I'm basically from Tumblr. That, that, that's a cause I could get behind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> remember, remember Tumblr? <laughs> I miss Tumblr. Every fucking thing on it's Tumblr. It's probably is. best that we don't have Tumblr anymore. Bro. I never had Tumblr. What is Tumblr, Tumblr, by the way? I Tumblr. God, Tumblr, I'm old. <laughs> so, so if you think about like what OnlyFans is and how you have to pay for nudes, Tumblr was like the free version of that. Like girls would. So it started like, to me, from what I remember, it was like Tumblr. Fin- that's what I was gonna say. It starts with a Tumblr, and girls would have like a Tumblr where they'd post like all their like thoughts and like quotes and shit. It was like super like, it was gay, but it was like gay in a cool way. And then oh, eventually- I remember what Tumblr is. Now. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. It was like yeah, a- it has like you have like the fucking like orange sky yeah. with the clouds, and then you have like a a quote, quote and, and then that you will scroll up, and it's a girl with her tits out, and then yeah. you scroll down, and then there's like a comedian. It was great. Like Frank Ocean was obsessed with Tumblr. He used to post all this stuff on there. He came out as gay on Tumblr, which was crazy. Like, uh, I know they like do like not a meme necessarily, but like now sometimes you can find them where it's like the old Tumblr and it looks like it's going to be something inspirational and it's like I like dick in my ass or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or I, like, I wow. farted or something. Yeah. yeah like something <laughs> stupid. Yeah, they. That's, but that's where a lot of girls would have like their regular Tumblr and then their nudes Tumblr and if you, they're like, you can only follow this if you have like, and then it became like Tumblr took away nudity. Like they're like, we don't allow nudity because there was so much CP on there. They're like, we're not doing this anymore. And then, then fenced has became a thing, but then that got out of hand because then people would just report you when you let them fucking follow you. And then finally, at the end, it was like Twitter, and then it became OnlyFans was like, just pay the fuck. Yeah, I know on Instagram, you can't show like your nipples or something. Yeah. It's like I got reported weird. one time, and my nipples weren't even out. Yeah. My like, my ex at the time bought me a really cute like, bra and underwear set, and I had posted like, my boobs. Yeah. You're yeah. like, that's a mole. Leave me alone. Well, no, my bra, <laughs> my bra was on, and it was yeah. like, Reported for nudity, and I'm like, where? where? Right? Yeah. Like, if I wear a normal shirt, I have cleavage. Like, yeah. this isn't nudity. It's kind of bullshit. You guys can walk out with your your tits out. All right, let's, let's just do it. Take our shirts off. Well, it's just like, why can't I go outside with my boobs? What's so wrong with my boobs and like 
your boobs. Yeah. Like, Listen, I think ninety nine percent of non Christian men would agree. Um, I think <laughs> the other one percent are gay. Um, <laughs> I don't. I, honestly, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Like I, to me, the up uh, upstairs, like the shirts part, I don't. I think it's kind of dumb that that's a rule at all for men or women. Um, but obviously, the downstairs stuff, it's a little weird if you're just like walking naked with kids out. But yeah, like, I don't think it's that crazy. Like I know it's cold. Maybe that's the reason. You know, we're in the Midwest. You know, which is why a lot of us men don't want to. Yeah. Go. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, it's just cold right now. It's just cold. It's normally bigger. I swear. Yeah. I can't get away with that anymore. She's seen it enough. Tinas? You ever heard of a tinas? <laughs> no. Oh, dude. That's called a tinas, dude. You don't ever let a woman see your tinas. It's a small, small, one of your penis is the smallest it can be. It's the tinas. What if your penis so all the time? is naturally yeah. small? Well, then you just kill yourself. I'd hope if I was a man, I'd have a big dick. I know, right? Wouldn't that suck? Or it would be worse if you have like a really big, you know what I mean? It's if I was like, a dude, I'd probably have a a, a I, small dick. Yeah. I want a big enough dick that I can helicopter. No, yeah. if I had a yeah. vagina, I'd want it to be a meaty bitch. I'd want to fucking the whole thing. Give it to me. Give me all. Give me all the kind of like flaps. flaps. Kind of like the, the joke uh, Bob Epstein did and <laughs> Curb Your Enthusiasm. What's remember? that one? No. You know, uh, I wish I could do it verbatim. <laughs> so. He wants an it, Arby's sandwich. It ends with, uh, yeah. P.S., I left your cunt in the sink. The lady had such a big vagina, she had to shove a, a liver into her so her husband <laughs> could enjoy it. And he wakes up and goes, oh, that was the be-. I'm paraphrasing. That was yeah. the best sex ever. I can't wait to go to work and come home and make love to you. P.S., your vagina is in the sink. Oh, my God. <laughs> if you ever see the clip, it's a lot better than when, the way he delivers it. The way he just said that reminded me of a video I watched. It's like, how are you going to... Sneak that in, and it's a bottle of wine, and this girl's wearing a skirt. Oh, and she's my God. I'm like, God. Uh, there's gotta, certain like, things on the I internet. had a fight with some girl because she said that she can fit an entire 12-inch dick in her. And we're like, no, you can't. It's <laughs> not was, that big. She was like, follow my fence, to <laughs> Follow my only fence, and you'll see I can't. So we had to look up the measurements of how long it is. And like, no, I'm pretty sure a vagina is only like four inches. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, unless she, she's them. like shoving and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You rolled it up in there yeah, yeah. like a burrito. Well, like... I know that like if you're if it's going well, it can like expand and contract because yeah. you can have basically your cervix can go. Can, up. Yeah, your yeah. your cervix can contract almost like you're having. A but kid. it doesn't go twelve inches. You never know. It's dude. not a foot. Well, you never know, dude. I'm only f- like five foot tall. Yeah. If my um, girl wants twelve inches in there. She's gonna need me to go in there five times. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Want you to like the old Red Fox joke? Girl said he want, she wanted him to <laughs> fuck her and hurt her, so he fucked her and hit her in the head with a brick. <laughs> Put your mouth on that girl. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's fucked up. Do you know what a donkey punch is? Absolutely, I do. So, um, one of my friends. One way my girl can get off. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> one of my friends, his name's Zach. He's a DJ in Peru at yeah. his parents' bar, and his dad let him show me how to like DJ a little bit. And um, I I went up there and he was like, I'm going to call you DJ Donkey Bunch. I didn't know what this was. And I went up to his dad and I was telling his dad about it. And he's like, do you know what that is, Nikki? This man's like his age. And I'm like, how's this motherfucker know? Yeah, yeah. But I don't. So I looked it up. Yeah. And it's when you're fucking from behind and you get punched in the back of the head. So she tenses up. And, then, and um, yeah. so now my friend calls me Donkey. Yeah, Donkey. So every time he sees me, he's like, Donkey. Donkey. <laughs> Get out of my swamp, donkey. <laughs> so we we all work for a normal place, right? We don't work for a weird place. But there's this uh, there's this porn company that actually has a, a boss as a masturbation policy, so you can uh, make a break if you have a permanent policy for a staff that if they need to masturbate, they can actually just take a break. We have plenty of people at work that just take this into seriousness and just do it. Yeah. I'm always so depressed at work. I can never get, yeah, <laughs> I can't get rise hard. to the occasion. One time I asked him to beat off in the bathroom and send me a video. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut that. I'm just and kidding. I, <laughs> my wiener has social anxiety, so <laughs> I, I don't like it when women ask me for a dick pic. Yeah. I mean, it's only happened once, but still I didn't like it because 
instantly it starts shriveling like a dog had seen the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I'm like, some trouble when he's I'm like vacuum sm- cleaner. smacking it around, squeezing it like a stress relief toy, yeah. trying to get it to come back to life. She's like, I'm waiting. Stop rushing me, woman. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scrolling through the app store while tickling myself, looking for a filter. Yeah. There's, there's You're like, I should have for- fucking did that blue chew. Uh, there's no, yeah, there's none for us men. No filters to help us out. No. Best I could do is Snapchat. Wound up looking like a robin's nest with three eggs in it. There you go. <laughs> uh, I think he didn't end up doing it because he's like, what if someone walks in? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't it's be loud. Just, <laughs> just... I'm, a, I'm a screamer. I can't. <laughs> You're okay. You're allowed to cough. You're allowed to exist, I guess. God, He's like, I'm a screamer. <laughs> and they're like, ah! ah, this guy's having a weird shit, dude. I was sitting next to a guy. He was having the weirdest shit I've ever heard in my life. He's in there. But they, he, I go in the bathroom sometimes and there's people just like, hello? Yeah. Oh, yeah, God. I'll be there in a minute. I was just talking to Keisha. And then I'm like, dude, are you taking a shit right now on the phone? Like in the bathroom at work? I, I have people sitting next to me, like very obviously shitting on the phone with their doctors. Well, yeah, it's purple. <laughs> yeah, there's pus. Oh, I'm sorry. I just squirted on the floor next to this on the floor next to this girl's foot, and she's like, "What the fuck is going on?" My feet don't reach the floor. It's yeah. good. I, I got. <laughs> I'm just imagining you shitting like this in the I, air. <laughs> I got a bad habit of playing bubble bash on the toilet. Yeah, and I wind up my legs fall asleep, and I've actually collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> bubble bash. That he's sounds lying. Like it's just because he's old and his knees are weak. <laughs> I get so he just loses the knees. circulation. <laughs> it's the circulation. He sits issues. down for two minutes and can't get back up. Dude, I'm. He I'm needs his life alert. Give me a... <laughs> help! I'm falling and I can't get up. <laughs> and like come in there and he's got his dick in his hand, jerking off, trying to get you a video. And he's like, oh fuck, my feet gave out. Ari's <laughs> beating. He's on the floor with the voter. <laughs> I finally got it hard. <laughs> Or he's beating it and he doesn't realize the shot's going to be that long and it lands on someone's lap. And then, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, what the fuck? And then they take it as a sign. Is it fucking gone. raining again? God damn it. I'm so this roof is this leaking. <laughs> the roof, I, I keep telling them to fix the roof. And it, is that salt water? <laughs> <laughs> it's coagulating. It's coagulating. It's not. <laughs> Uh, and that's the worst thing about nut, right? It coagulates the longer it's exposed to ho- oxygen. It starts to, like, gel up, you know, like silica. No, you don't know? No. No, oh, you get the towel quick then. <laughs> you must get the towel quick. Here's a warm washcloth for you, sweetheart. I make yeah. him get the towel sometimes quick. Oh, I do it all the if time. If he comes on me. Yeah, It makes sense, man. Well, I don't want you dragging it through the, like, like a snail just fucking, just like, to the fucking yeah. house. Like, let me go grab the towel. You just got to squeeze it and then run to the bathroom. Oh, well, I'm talking about when you, like, come on, not in. <laughs> Dude, you just... Listen, if Your pH comes... balance is fucked right now. <laughs> <laughs> if he comes on the bed, I make him clean it up, because I'm like, I don't want to roll over in that shit. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm making sure it's on her side every time. Well, I'm I like, figured... sorry, tired, going to bed. Well, I figured I'm the delivery man. If she can't handle the product... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should have paid for the extra insurance. I told you about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know how they do the little thing? You go and get like a. That's the weirdest shit, too, when you're going to like Walmart and you're like, I'm going to buy a head. Like, I bought those headphones. Mm. They're like $20 headphones. They're not expensive. They're nice, but they're 20 bucks. And they're like, Do you want the uh, protection plan? I'm like, These were $20. How much is the protection plan? Like $5. I'm like, Fuck you. I'll just buy new ones. <laughs> like, come on, dude. And then how long it would take to like, Well, we need to make sure they're good. And. I don't return okay. things just because I, I hate it. Listen, yeah. uh, we just got one of these cool, like, wireless vacuums that's, like, not, like, a huge vacuum. It's just, like, one of the little small Yeah, yeah. They're fucking lit. Especially have, with a dog. Well, I have cats, and uh, when they get out of their little rocks, their cat litter will go on the floor, everywhere. and all of our floors are hardwood, and I'm not trying to walk across my floor and catch it on my feet. Oh, it's the worst. So they have a warranty for the thing, and then they have a warranty they want you to buy, and once this warranty's up, this one goes on. Yeah. And I told this lady, like, yeah... Sure, why not? You know, it was like $170. Yeah. And I never did the warranty. Like, I paid for the warranty and did not sign up. You never, like, actually... <laughs> I never kept my receipt. Yes, I will give you a $150 tip or whatever. No, yeah. $50 tip. Uh, my son, uh, they did that to me. He has a he had a, a monitor from Sam's Club for his uh, computer. He has a nice computer monitor. Curved one. It's real nice. It's got curves. So, you know, it's a good one. Um, I like my monitors. Like I like my women <laughs> curves. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. thirty-two yeah. inches, please. Huh? Yeah. Uh, I'm just kidding. But anyway, I got that for him, and then like we pulled it out of the box, and it was fucking broken, and I didn't pay for the like 
thing. I didn't pay for it. So I was like, yeah, they fucking finally got me. But I took it back up there, and they took it back anyway. So got him a new one, and then I bought the protection plan for that one. <laughs> <laughs> so one time. They got you. At band camp? Um, I sold. <laughs> got him. <laughs> so uh, my ex had kids, and we bought, um, one of his buddies bought, like, a, a pallet that had uh, switches on it and stuff. Yeah. Um, and one of the switches we got, it would like it's charged didn't last very long sometimes. And one of my friends bought it, and they're like, "I don't care if it works, I'll just put it in the one that w- in the in the, one of the boxes we have and take it back or something like that and say that I got it from yeah Walmart, like a Nintendo Switch." Yeah, and so oh. they took this broken one in or one that didn't hold charge and got a brand fucking new one. Hell yeah. I love oh I God. love capital. I love stealing from Walmart. Fuck, fuck Walmart, dude. I didn't know you could do that shit. I was like, where do you come up with that? I used yeah. to work in get the put on a list, customer so. service at Lowe's. Yeah. It was very Lowe's Home Improvement. Come in and meet a tiny lady. Go ahead. Yep. So that you work the story. There, and they just come it. in there and they'd say, you do it to yourself? No, people would come in there with like stolen shit constantly. Yeah. It was I saw funny. a video of a lady that was like, she was doing the Walmart grocery thing where she's like, I can't afford my groceries. Can anybody pay for these? And people kept paying for them, and then she'd like go outside, like, thank you, thank you, then come back in and return all the groceries. And I guess she did this like four times, and finally the manager was like, you got to fucking go. You can't keep doing this. Like She had had people paying like multiple That's insane. Times. I just, the, the amount of, that seems harder than just having a job. I know at Walmart, you're only allowed to return things so many times. Yeah, that's probably what happened. Like uh, if you get a gift, like say you have a kid and their clothes that you bought don't fit. Mm-hmm. You can only return it something like five times within that year that's a gift yeah that's fucking crazy dude i don't return i, I don't it's very rare that i return things i did return that computer because it was like 200 fucking or computer it was money. broken so. and it was 200 fucking plus dollars i'm like i'm not paying that's expensive dude it was this big christmas present broken can you imagine that that suck a kid comes in and they're like and then they didn't want to give me. A, they gave me a gift card for a free box. They're like, well, I was like, I threw the box away. I like set it in his room, plugged it in, didn't turn it on because I'm like, I want him to see it. And then it's broken. Fucking dumb, dude. I should have never taken it out. That's what she said. I mean, probably should have taken it out. Probably for you. You got enough kids, dude. All your kids are Hispanic. You have four thousand kids. Isn't that what you I have four thousand. I have four point six thousand. Depends if if she gives birth to the puppies later. Could you imagine if we gave birth to kids like puppies? Like, like you got oh, God. Uh, of them, no. dude. Hey, if you got to take care of kids like puppies, I don't want it. Yeah. That actually might but be But puppies, easier. you can leave home. Yeah, but, okay, we have puppies right now. I foster. I, have I saw that. I, I, that's, a, that's a great thing that you do. Uh, yeah, actually, I uh, told her we were coming to this podcast, and she's like, Broadcast Star Rescue. So mm-hmm. it's uh, Unchained Souls in Kokomo. Unchained Souls. Um, And I have, we actually just dropped one off. Her name's Allie. Um, to possibly find a home. She's a lab mix, but I had three lab mixes, and then I have a German Shepherd mix. Yeah. And then we had, before that, uh, doodle pit mixes, and we ended up keeping one. I have a but funny... those things shit so fucking much, so if they shit as much as kids shit, I don't think I want kids. Because <laughs> I swear to God, you take them outside, and they'll, they'll all, like, whine and be like, I want to go in, and then you'll bring them in, and they'll shit on my floor. Yeah, yeah. God. What, what's your problem? It's not that cold. Yeah. Same with kids. They always shit on the floor, too. We have a lab mix right now. He's adorable. And he'll go outside and he'll be like, oh, 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 <laughs> the whole time. And I'm like, just poop. Yeah, I, uh, I saw this earlier. I mean, I don't know if I'll put this on the screen for the people that I saw this. I was like, when well, abortion is legal, so you adopt a pit bull instead. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm like, I was like, that's horrible because <laughs> you, you take care of dogs. So. You like pit bulls, right? Yeah, yeah. I have a pit. He's uh, He'll be yeah. eight in March. Every time I know somebody with a pit, it's, it's always, something always happens. And I'm always like, fuck, why the hell does it always have to happen with the pit bulls? It's like, I want it to not happen. And then, like, I had a, a, a stepdaughter for a while um, that she got. Right on the face from a pit bull. And it was mostly, the pit bull was raised by her grandpa, but then her grandpa gave it to his stepkid. And then he would, like, blow in his face and then, like, have him chase the door and, like, do stupid shit. And she was blowing bubbles and that set him off. And he, like, took out her tooth and everything. She lost a tooth right there and had a scar on her face. Like, the problem with those dogs isn't even that they're aggressive. It's more that if they become aggressive, they're quicker to, they can take you out quicker than any other dog. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, they were actually more, uh, Statistically, smaller dogs bite more than big dogs, but Absolutely. the only reason my mom's Chihuahua bit Alexis's nose, like her yeah. septum, yeah. and it pulled it almost all the way off. God. But the only reason people take it as like a like big dogs are dangerous, like pit bulls, Rottweilers, 
a golden retriever is because yeah. their bite is harder. Oh yeah, they, they can do more damage. Because so when they their bite, jaw it's... is bigger. Yeah. So like, if a chihuahua comes up and bites you, it'll take out a small chunk. Where versus, if a golden retriever comes up and bites you, it's gonna be big yeah. because their bite is bigger. But yeah, small. A lot of smaller dogs are more aggressive. Absolutely, I think yeah, it's just kind of like it. You know, if you got stabbed in the ankles versus if you got like fucking bit on the face. Your yeah. cat heard us talking yeah. about cats. My cat's fucking going. I got two cats, and they're both like half Siamese, which means they're assholes. Oh, I have a half Siamese. His name is Elvis. Yeah, my Siamese is actually. I love Siamese cats. It's a, a Chinese word for asshole. My <laughs> other cat. They are he's, assholes. He's gray and he's 11 and my Siamese is three he's always trying to fuck him yeah <laughs> hell yeah man. which is also weird because my male dogs always try to fuck each other and it's like hell yeah, dude. i got you're two just, female dogs there's just right so many now, gays in your house yeah like <laughs> lbg kiki but fucking we'll be in bed and i'll wake up to yeah. and it's my gray old cat trying to fuck my Siamese <laughs> cat and i'm like <laughs> Stop. No means Stop, no. Dude, won't you chill? <laughs> and he's not even trying to get away. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sometimes I think Elvis is just over fighting. He's just like, just do it. it. <laughs> Put it in there for a second. That's all right. <laughs> Jeff, are you a car guy? What's that? Are you a car guy? I don't know what that means. Are you a, are car, you a car guy? guy? Do you, you like, like cars? In cars and stuff? Uh, he knows what wheels are. Yeah, if okay. they get me to point A to point B, that's Somebody all I Somebody posted this and said, if you don't know what this is, then you don't know anything about cars. And I'm like, I don't fucking know what that is. You I, know what I mean? Do you really not know what that is? Dude, I had a, I, do I, not I was speculum Aiden about it. I might speculate. It's a speculum. Do you know what it is? Yeah, that's yeah. what they put in you when Dally died bill. in college. It's called a speculum. Have, like, so I think not... that's what they do on your like 21st birthday. They stick that one in you and then they swap. I keep hitting this. So one. that doesn't right. go on a car? It's okay. No. No. So yeah. Yeah. Doesn't have a I don't know shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm dumb. Yeah, you put it in the <laughs> gas tank and you spread yeah. it open and then stick. <laughs> Yeah. It's actually how you get the engine separated from the transmission. You put it in there and then you ratchet it up. Yeah. No, nah, these things are hilarious, dude. I'd love to just. You can th- go to one of my appointments and watch. <laughs> I think they should have that. That should be that should be an episode on YouTube. It should be like a whole channel of just you get to watch vaginas from that. Well, we got to watch the children being born. Yeah. Why shouldn't we? Yeah. Let's be honest. Nine times out of ten, the dads aren't there. Hey. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was there for all my children's births. At least the ones I claim. <laughs> just kidding. The 4.6 billion? Yeah, 4.6 billion children crossing the border right now. All of them. I'm like, come on. Let's go. Jeff We're actually going the other way. Huh? Jeff has a daughter. You have a daughter? Yeah. She's, Hell yeah. She's uh, 20, same age as my... Never mind. Uh, <laughs> she's, uh, she's 27. Yeah. She's she like her? going to be 27? Never. She hasn't met her. She's uh, been in South Korea. Talk for... to her. South Korea? Yeah. She's Is that in the military? She's a teacher. You're in the military, right? Yeah, I was. Yeah, Army? Marines. Marines? Yeah. Oh, that's fucking She's awesome. not Asian. She's not a Korean. Oh. It's okay. Are you no, sure? it's white. I'd love to get in trouble again. I about did it. I just didn't want you to... She's not Asian? No. Why is she in Korea? She wa- she studied linguistics in college and has always had a fascination, fascination with languages, so she wanted to go overseas. She's always loved the Orient, too. Yeah. Anime and everything. And yeah. That's where she wanted to live. And well, where they're bringing them all over here now. She's going to have to come back and help us. I don't think she's even going to want to come back to the States, to be honest no. with you. She she's moving, it. actually. Is she a K-pop fan or something? No, but... she loves all that stuff. Yeah, K-pop. Yeah. K-pop's cool. My friend Destiny loves K-pop, and yeah. she'll show it to me. I love K-pops, too. <laughs> I like K-pops. <laughs> you see my picture? Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> you know, you can buy a box of Ding Dongs and just stick a Popsicle stick in it. It'd be right? cheaper, right? Yeah. Well, the kids love it. We go to Starbucks usually, like, almost daily. It's probably shouldn't, but we do, me and my fiancé. And so the kids are like, we want cake pops. We want cake pops. And well, the middle one doesn't like cake pops. He wants the chocolate version of the – So we, uh, we had, and the regular ones are pink. So I did I went to, I went to the pink one, and I was like – Funny. Yeah, that was my picture. You're well, so hilarious. And I was like, the, my kids might like cake pops, but I like it when the cakes pop. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's something stupid. I just have to post something every once in a while so people think I'm funny. You know what I mean? It's the only reason I exist. And we're back. All my right. cake pops sometimes. Yeah, so there you go. He's like, on New Year's, cakes my, pop. on New Year's, my we stayed at a hotel because we went to like this hotel takeover thing. And uh, my best friend and this guy that she's kind of seeing were there. And the dress I was wearing, he, I guess he told her he was like. Damn, Nikki's bringing all the cake. <laughs> so he kept calling me cake all night. I was like, I no longer accept Nikki. I'm forever cake. Yeah, I'm for cake. <laughs> you yes. just, you're just the nickname girl. They're like I donkey am. cake, Nikki, cake. Nick. You're donkey cake. Donkey, donkey cake. <laughs> yeah, I, I am the donkey cakes. Nice to meet you. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Gordy used to have some cakes actually back in the day. I don't need more. Yeah, when she had the the surgery, they went away. Sorry. Yeah, the cake she ate and the cake she had went away. It was bullshit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I can't. Eat. So like flat cake. Yeah. People yeah. like flat bread. Bunt bunt cake. Thank you. Bunt cake. <laughs> Thank you. Bunt cake. That's like, that's like when I go up to play ball. I'm really excited to have my skin cut off, though. Are you? You are. Did you get that scheduled yet? No, I go to the 14th. Okay. Well, I told him to make sure it's not in, around anything we need to get done. So okay. We have a lot of important things to do. I was. We talked a little bit about the, the masturbation breaks, right? And then I saw, mm-hmm. I saw this thing. They have this automatic sperm extractor thing. And I was like, this is kind of insane. Like, a so, pocket pussy? It's basically what it is, but it's a machine that they have set up at like sperm banks for guys who... Are, are they all like next to each other like that? So I was thinking maybe they can just install a few of these at work. It's That'll like a urinal. Yeah, it's like a urinal. Yeah, they just come next to each it's other. It's like a, a movable they're flesh. They're brothers. That was all, one of the biggest all questions. Each it's other's like, wieners. Anyway. That was the biggest question. Like, why would you put them right next to each other, man? Let me get some privacy. It's already bad enough. And we, you guys don't know about urinals like we do. If you go to a urinal, like you're just literally next to a dude with your dong out, like. There's very, you know, they they think men are homophobic, but we literally have our dicks next to each other all the time, dude. It's constant. But yeah, that's. I mean, I didn't need a break. Actually, I'll be right back. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> so it's like a whole sperm extractor. I'm like, man, I just couldn't imagine like sitting next to my homie being like, yeah. So how are it's you for doing? people that are too embarrassed to masturbate at a hospital, so you can just yeah. get jerked off at a hospital next to a dude. Yeah, exactly. That's a little bit helpful. They give you a blue chew and think I'm old fashioned there. I'll just... <laughs> hey, some men have some thick butts. Yeah, yeah. So at least if you're getting it, like, look at yeah. my ass a little, like, right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess with the you know, like, well, I came in here straight. Now Do I'm they have like, little screens on them. <laughs> yeah, probably. They put, they put one of those new Apple One Visions on, and you're like, I saw oh, that. Yeah, those are crazy, it, it dude. Looked, yeah, it's like I don't know. I don't know if I'd want one or not. My kid has the Oculus Three, like the new Oculus, and he's always playing basketball in my living room. And I'm like, can you fucking chill, dude? <laughs> Just shaking my house, fucking playing ball. I tried a, an Oculus. Have they tried tonight. going outside? No, he has never heard of it. I don't think you're supposed to go outside. She's talking I mean, about playing, playing basketball. basketball. Oh, I, was like, I don't think you're supposed to take those outside because you could be walking it. Yeah. <laughs> Why is my kid laying in the street? Yeah. He's uh, playing basketball. It's fine. It's fine. I tried to play the Five Nights at Freddy game on that thing. Yeah, how was it? Fucking creepy. Yes, scary, terrifying. Right? No. You have to be in this room and you can't like look away from the screen and then one of the fucking teddy bears walks by and you had to hope the door stays shut. The horror shit you. And it's just fucking scary. Like, I love horror movies, but just like that. Oh. And then one time I played in my uncle's garage and one of the things was you had to go all the way to the end of this um, plank. Yeah. And it's like a huge skyscraper and you're above like New York or something. Yeah. And I know that I'm in my uncle's garage. Oh, and where I'm you like, walk? And I'm over here like, God, tiptoeing. Yeah. That's the only no, thing that freaks I'm me out. I'm not doing that. No somebody just pushes you off, and it like you watch yourself <laughs> like fall to your death. No, and I'm like, that wasn't even me. real, and it gave me anxiety. That ain't for me at all. You can you don't even ask me to do some shit like that. I'd be mad. I hate the roller coaster ones. Well, in the future, I love roller coasters though. In the future, like on the set though. In the future, they uh, we're gonna go from just having that one vision. They actually have a smart. Mouthware that allows you to control devices with your tongue, which is kind of crazy. So when you say, hey, girl, with that mouth do, she says, control the remote. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's Be like fun. Jeff's butthole toilet thing. Tell him. Tell, uh-huh. tell me about your butthole uh, toilet. The toilet. Oh, yeah. The scientists are developing a smart toilet where it can identify the user by scanning their sphincter. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, does that mean everybody, Literally. your buttholes are like your fingerprints? Yeah. Man, He's imagine. Spread them cheeks and. Imagine there's somewhere, wow. somebody Booty somewhere friend. working on rectal recognition software. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, this doesn't work in the gay community. I don't know why. <laughs> Butthole's just blown out, you know? If you got a little balloon knot back there, it might throw the system off, you know? Like your I'd hemorrhoids? Be for, I'd be afraid yeah. to get sick and throw up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Unidentified asshole somebody. detected. <laughs> you put your lips down there and it's like, Jeff, welcome back. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Well, I mean, that's that's the joke is like you're, you're the same material that your butthole is made out of is the same material your lips are made out of. So it's really just one fucking tube made out of the same material. You know what I mean? So if she fucking winks back there, she winks up here. You're good. You're good to yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm down with it. I don't I don't have any issue with that. Do you like comedy? Have you ever done it? Have you ever thought about going up on stage and telling some of those jokes that your family and friends just love to hear? Well, now you have the opportunity. 
every Thursday night starting February 15th at Cooper's Pub, we are doing an open mic. The Kokomo Press is doing an open mic at Cooper's Pub in the downstairs comedy den. It's going to be awesome. It's going to start at 8 p.m. on Thursdays, February 15th. And we're going to be doing open mic with 10 to 15 spots for each comedian at five minutes a spot. Do not hesitate to sign up. Signups will be at 730 physically down there in the bar. Or if you want to, you can sign up early. All you have to do is message our page at the Kokomo Press. It's going to be a great time. We're going to have drinks and we're going to have food specials. And it's all a part of Cooper's Pub. You just go straight in and instead of making a right. You make a left, you go downstairs, you make a left, you make a left, and you're right down there in the comedy den. Myself and Brian Allen West are excited to see you, and we'll also have friends that you may know, like Jordan Bell, a.k.a. Hypocrisy Jones, Sean Dalrymple, a local comedian we love, and even Courtney Richardson. You're going to see us all out there. We're going to be having a blast. And again... It starts February 15th, but after that, it's every Thursday at 8 p.m. in the Comedy Den downstairs at Cooper's Pub. Hope to see you there. I saw this thing, too. I thought this was a very interesting story. Um, this lady, uh, she's a 16-year-old, and she's the youngest teacher in America, and she has three degrees already. And I was like, congratulations. And then I sat and thought for a second, and I was like, why would you go to school to get three degrees to be a teacher? <laughs> You're right. not getting paid at all. That seems like, she doesn't seem that smart to me now. <laughs> she still lives with her parents. She's underage. <laughs> yeah, she's 16. But she's like, I'll be a teacher. Ugh. Ugh. At 16 years old, why would you think, I want to teach kids my age? <laughs> if I had a 16-year-old teacher when I was 16 and they tried to tell me what to do, I'd be yeah. like, fuck you. That might be a life hack. <laughs> That's crazy because like now you can you like I had sex with my teacher. Oh, she's the same age. It's cool. Right. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like now it's like that. It's no it's longer illegal. Hack. No longer illegal to bang your teachers. If she gets pregnant, you can just take her taxes. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's the adult in the situation. I saw this too. A man in India was pronounced dead, and he comes back to life after his ambulance hit a large pothole. And I said, you know, that's why Kokomo isn't fixing them. They're trying to save lives. Yeah. You know what I mean? Narcan and potholes. Have. have you guys been on 31, like going towards oh, the room? Oh, bad, Jesus. Right? Yeah. I hit one that. of them. I was like, oh, my God. And then I went to Swerve to not get the other one. Yeah. And my best friend was like, what are you doing? I'm like, look at these things. Yeah. yeah. That'll swallow my whole car. Yeah. Was that last Thursday? I'm pretty sure that there was a guy out there. I'm just kidding. She's like, oh, <laughs> boom. <laughs> ah, damn potholes. It was you, wasn't it? It was me. It was I was you. hanging out. That's my kink, actually. That's my kink, getting hit by cars. Run me over, baby. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> I just got hit by a fucking car the other day, actually. I was driving at work and got T-boned. Yeah. I thought you meant, like, physically. Yeah. I'm vegan. How can you I get T-boned? I'm just kidding. I'm vegan. If you're a vegan, you get T-boned. Are you pissed? <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, I fucking hate T-bones. I can't have steak. I can't have steak, but I can. I saw this video too. This is kind of works a little bit. So this guy is at a twerking contest with the girls, right? And she's fucking killing it. And she's. Hold on! 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 We come in his pants. Damn. Could you imagine? That might be the worst day of my life if I'm like getting at a twerk contest yeah. and all of a sudden somebody's like, "Oh my god, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up!" He coming in pants. <laughs> he coming in his pants. It becomes a song, and he's like, he's like excited about it. He looks like he's Indian too, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, it's like, hey. Those girls are all like, my turn. She wins, right? Like if somebody does that, it's an automatic. Yeah, win, it should right? be automatic yeah. win. Yeah. You automatically win. Well, no, these girls are like, <laughs> these girls are like my turn. Then I can get his tax. Yeah. They're like, damn. <laughs> yeah. She I was just like love the everybody's third one reactions. Everybody's reactions are friggin' hilarious. They're all just like, oh my god, that man came in his pants. <laughs> yeah, dude. I also saw this. Did you guys know that they have a basketball league in Britain? You want to know what it's called? BBL, British <laughs> Basketball League. I was like, what? They switched their uh, logo from the left to the right for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, uh, could you I didn't imagine? even know. Kind of look, <laughs> looks like a like a little booty. booty <laughs> I know they they were leaning in. <laughs> they put their left foot in. They put their ass out. You know that type of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, I saw this. Did you guys hear about the lady that stabbed a man 108 times, killed him, 
and she got 100 hours of community service. She should but, at least get 108 hours of community service. Yeah, like one for each stabbing. Apparently, she was high on drugs. Or like oh, attempted oh. murder charge. Yeah, she stabbed him 108 times and then stabbed. You can see on her neck, she actually stabbed herself multiple times. And she was. they said she had a psychotic break. Guess what drug she was on? What? Marijuana. No. Come That's on. What they, the judge gave her 108 hours or 100 hours of community service for killing a man. I was like, what the hell, dude? She's the female Brock Turner, if I'm being honest. She got away with it. She did. Brock yeah. Turner's that white guy that like rapes on Yeah, and got away with it basically. He went to like yeah. college. And... and the fucking judge was like, oh, he, you know, he's an upsetting citizen. He just made a mistake. And I'm like, that's kind of what they did with her, but she killed the dude. They'd only been dating for three weeks. Could you imagine dating a girl? I guess he had given her, uh, they have like, you know, if you go to like the weed shops in other states, because our state's dumb, they have like the real crazy grade. It was like 99, but like the high percentage THC. Like this was supposed to, he didn't tell her that it was the strong weed. So she smoked it. If it's apparently. the strong weed, she's just going to go to sleep. No, she had a psychotic break. She absolutely lost her she shit. She probably was crazy before that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe she did it in her sleep. Who knows? She's cute, though. I mean. Cute but crazy. I, That's what men like now. Tonight at 10 would let her kill me, too. That's why she's going to get me. invited to a bunch of, like, uh, <laughs> wrestling shows and stuff. She's not crazy. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could do it. That was mean. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been crazy now. lucky. <laughs> Have you guys ever heard of the Korean corn dog? So there was a postman on our page about the Koreans coming to town, and one of the things he was like, uh, one of the jokes in there was like, they uh, uh, have a Korean corn dog uh, version over at the Cone Palace. It's coming up the Korean corn dog, and I don't even know if we knew, but it's actually when uh, four people are aligned in such a way that each person is able to both give and receive oral simultaneously. That's called a Korean corn dog. <laughs> so it's actually a sexual position. We didn't even know it. Huh. You ever make a joke and not realize you made an even better joke? No. <laughs> oh, it's like never. Heard. He said no. <laughs> Well, it's like sucking someone's dick and yeah. then them sucking you know, yeah. somebody else sucking your dick. But it's like four. So it's like, it's like a, what's that fucking human centipede, but with. Uh, it's like a whole circle, okay. With cunnilingus. That's said coitus. That's wrong. Did you see that movie? <laughs> what? The human centipede? Yeah. yeah. Did you yeah. see the last one with the warden? The warden? Yeah, no. that shit was annoying as fuck. I was waiting for him to die. I never, I never watched the human centipede because I lived it. It's a different experience. <laughs> When you yeah. live it, it's a little different. Right? Nope. I was just happy to be the one on the end. That's the, that's what you want. That's the position you want, right? You want to be the one with the mouth open, like you want to be. You leading. were the one on the the back end. No, I was on the end. No, my butthole so like the is front fucked end? right now. My yes. mouth's good. Have you ever seen that fucking episode of South Park where they're shitting out their mouth? That's all I could think of all the time. Human centipede is such a weird fucking. Who came up with that? What's that dude's name? Doesn't he have a name. I don't, I don't know. I never like saw Grindhouse. two girls in one cup. I you haven't? I never saw it. No, everybody told me about it, and I went to look it up, and all the videos were gone. Yeah. See, yeah, I, everybody was looking at it. Up, right? Yeah. And then they throw up, and then they eat. There's, there's puke. There's yeah. You ever, uh, watch that video where that Yannicka or Janica girl fucking ate her own tampon? Ugh. Yeah, yes. I remember that was like the tampon girl. Everybody fucking called her that for the long time. Yeah. I remember that. That was yeah. viral. That was like viral before Facebook. I think we talked about it on here. Yeah, dude. I remember because we, we were like trying not to let people know it was you. I know. Boy, <gasps> kids these days. Kids these days. Out there eating their own tampons and shit. He was probably 45. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, why do I even use this Facebook thing? <laughs> Is that the funniest thing like that happened? Because like, you went through all through school, everything, no social media. And then all of a sudden, when you're in like probably mid 30s, right? Yeah, I was actually a late comer to it. I mean, it was a. I didn't get a cell phone. Yeah. For a long time. Until, he didn't have a cell phone until he was 40. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody everybody else had them, and I thought, I ain't getting a damn cell yeah. phone. I never had one of, you know. And Let me inconvenience <laughs> my life because I'm stubborn. <laughs> and I finally got one. I'm like, holy shit, I can watch Lady Gaga videos. Yeah. I'm like. <laughs> so, he said, I was a late I was a late comer, and I was like, is that the opposite of premature ejaculator? <laughs> he came after. Yeah, yeah. He was like, I got it. Woo! She was. That was that was the Bobby Lee joke, right? Her her joke. pants are already up and gone out the house for like three days, and he's like, ah. He's at work the next day. Oh fuck! Oh man! God, <laughs> not again! You're like, what did you prematurely? Ejac- no, actually, I post <laughs> maturely ejaculated. I uh, post immaturely ejaculated. It was like a problem. That would suck. Could you imagine having that? That's worse than premature. I'd rather at least suck. do it in yeah. the moment, get it over with, and be like, I'd be afraid to leave the house. <laughs> Yeah, you could be in the middle of talking to your mom in the kitchen and just, ah! Damn <laughs> That's it. Hilarious. That's a funny skit. Not We're you, gonna... though, because oh. both of yours are dead. Yeah. 
calling dibs on that <laughs> Kokomo Press. That skit. Don't try to take it. It's going to be a funny skit we're going to do. We're going to be like, Brian's going to be like, ah. Oh, like, yeah, she makes jokes about my mom. I say, which one? Yeah. <laughs> I make like, one of them was like, uh, what did I say? He'll say, like, what are you doing? And I'll be like, your mom. And then, then I'll be like, the dead one. Oh, man. They're both dead. <laughs> yeah. The dead one. And he just automatically assumes the one that, uh. I'm talking about as one that didn't love him. Oh. I was given up for adoption. My biological mother had 14 kids, gave all of them up, all of them up for adoption, but me or yeah. but one, and uh, I didn't find out till I was in my mid 40s. Oh Every, shit! Yeah, I kept it secret from me. I didn't know. I had, I had all the and I my biological sire had three kids, so I had 17 siblings out there running around. Yeah, I didn't know dating for me. What if you started? Yeah, yeah, dating for me was like genetic Russian roulette. I That's asked, why you have to date younger. I asked out. Two co- <laughs> I'm not Little. kidding. I asked out two I cousins and a half too. sister. Yeah. You did? You didn't I didn't know realize. It? I figured it out later. Thankfully, my half sister said we had no. a lot in common. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot in common. I don't know what it was. What's wild? Like, you're really attractive. It's probably because you look just like me. <laughs> uh, what's really wild about like me making like, your mom jokes is. He doesn't care that I say the one that doesn't love you or the dead one, but I'd be like, you son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah. He'd be like, don't fucking call me that. Yeah. <laughs> My so, mom loved me. Yeah. Don't you dare. Yeah, she did love you with those three fucking different haircuts in the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you son of a bitch, you mean son of a bitch is, okay? More than one. You ain't going to talk about it. You got to bring them both up. That's awesome. No, my mom. My mom was amazing when I was younger. Man, she had she had three kids, and then she had tubal pregnancies, and like at one point she had twins, and they just died. What? And, yeah, they just died, and I was like, I was like, if God can abort them, but she's not to anyway. Um, so all that shit happened, and then she got with a man that had like four kids. So then, our growing up, we had so many fucking kids in our house. It was way too many. Biologically, I have like fifteen siblings. Fifteen siblings? Yeah, my dad was a whore. Hell yeah, dude. Um, the ones that I grew up with, I had two twin brothers. And my mom married a guy who had an older daughter. She's in her 30s. Yeah. And then I have another set of twins, brother and sister. So you guys are all from like, you, did, so when you were adopted, was it a big family or is it just you? No, my parents that adopted me, uh, they were older. They had one kid. He uh, died. Mm-hmm. But I was the only child growing oh, up. That's probably nice, right? Yeah. I mean. A little boring. I should have known I was adopted, though. I mean, there were hints were all over. My dad used to say all the time, come here, you little bastard. <laughs> I just thought he was being mean, you know. Yeah. I, 18 years of family reunions on my dad's side. I was only in one group photo. My yeah. thumb was on the lens. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh. Damn. I have a bunch of siblings, dude. But they're all on drugs or schizophrenic now, so it sucks. I don't. I am kind of close to some of my siblings. Yeah. Some of them, not so much. Yeah. I have this older sister. Her and I fight sometimes because she's an idiot. Yeah. And she threatened to beat me up. I'm like, please fucking fight me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have another sister. Where we almost like completely, completely alike. Our body types are slightly different, but I think I'm a little cuter. There you go. We call each other twins because people get us confused. Except she says it happens to her a lot more than it happens to me. But they'll be like, hey, Nikki. And she's like, no. And I go, oh, Nikki, you're so fine. You're so fine. You blow my mind, hey, Nikki. <laughs> yeah. Is your name Nikki or is it like Nicole? It's, uh, Nicolette. Nicolette? Yeah, Nicolette Sheridan. I was named after a TV star. Her oh, shit. last name is my middle name. Nicolette Sheridan. Yeah. Isn't that the gum? No, it's Nicolette. Yeah. What did she start? That's with? hard to say too. Be don't cool. yeah, say that. That's why, that's why cool. I don't let people uh, call me Nicolette because I don't like the stupid jokes. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Already brought them up. She's like, I'm. I, hey, I, I'm married to a comedian, but I hate jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I like my name. It's really pretty, but uh, that's actually where Nick Shear comes from because I used to work at a prison and. If those guys wanted to find out who you were, they would. Oh, yeah. I've and uh, some of them scared the shit out of me. So I was like 19 at the time. And um, I was dating a guy whose kids lived in Bunker Hill, and that prison's right there. So yeah. I was like, I don't want them to like right. connect because they were they were. Little well, they kind of tell you that there, too. Once you get reached out, they're like, you got to change your name on social media so that they can't actually find you. My ex uh, started working. Right before we broke up, she started working at the prison over there, the one in – on the way to yeah. Peru. And uh, she worked there for, I don't even know if she works there now. I don't know fucking anything about her, but I know she got, she decided that's where she, that was her dating pool now. <laughs> that was one thing that I think is interesting is like they all date each other. It's all like. Yeah, I was never one of those. You're like, no thanks. I don't like um, the eat where I shit. There was a dude who. <laughs> Not since I was in the, the, the centipede. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Uh, there was a dude too. who was going to beat my fucking ass because this guy had drugs in his ear. 
and um, I was like, what's on your ear? And him and I kind of had like a good rapport. Like usually he was really respectful to me and he's like nothing. And then I was, I stopped him and I called for your yard and was trying to get it. And this guy started getting in my face and was yelling at me. Come to find out. Cause I went on vacation the next week. Uh, he was fucking the girl in the pod. So he could have beat my ass and she could have not opened the doors for these people. But he had a shank on him. Oh my God. And I was like, cause he got in my face. And the only reason he backed out of my face was he was leaving to go back to his job and then he started coming back and yard pulled out like this huge can of pepper spray and he was done getting in my face yeah but he wow. pulled that shank out and stabbed me anytime he was an inmate right yeah okay, i was like Something not all of them are awful like i've i've seen some of them i actually ran into one that was in one of my housing units at the at the elbow room a couple of weeks ago and he was super respectful yeah some of them they're not that great like yeah, yeah, yeah. they're pieces of shit um <laughs> but I was never one of those women, like, they, people, they'll hit on you. I mean, they do. Yeah, yeah. I had, there was one, he's, uh, was he was trans, transforming into a woman, but he still had a dick, so legally he's still a man, but he had yeah. boobs. Yeah. Um, and one time I was riding, and he was, like, making fun of me because I was chubby, and I'm thinking this whole time, like. Bruh. You have no Bruh. right to sit here and disrespect me. Right. That's kind of, right. I mean, that, uh, that whole, uh, I mean, I don't want to get too heavy into it, but that whole genre of, like, fucking people who transition after they go to prison i feel like that like it's so hard to even have a conversation about that because it's such an awkward you know what i mean like like are is it legit or is it to get out of something you know what i mean and you want to take them at face value and say like okay clearly you're trans but then you you hear about some of the shit that's been happening in certain institutions where women are getting pregnant and there's been rape like graping and stuff going on and it's like oh it's scary like this i think he I actually was... have a story this guy uh, this female convicted male who was messaging teens uh, was prosecuted under a woman's name, but now she identifies as him. So like transitioned after, but was already a person who was an offender. And it's like at that point, where does she go? You know what I mean? Like, I do think, you put her in the, I the think, women or the men? I think he, she, mm -hmm. uh, was transitioning before. Yeah. They went and to then, okay. prison. So like they still had to take their hormones and stuff. Yeah. But like, because they were in prison, they could not get the rest of the surgery. Yeah. Right. Uh, what's really weird about that, too, like, with that kind of scenario is, like, she yeah. would, like, offer sexual favors to the men there because she had boobs. Yeah, yeah. So it's like... It's, it's like you don't know what to do. They're in a limbo. Like, no matter what, it's considered rape. Like, if two men are in the facility fucking each other in the shower or something it's still considered rape yeah so at like that's rape too whether he was born a man and is transitioning into a female it's like they're still not allowed to do it yeah, yeah. but it's like it's a gray you, can't, area. <laughs> you can't stick her in a female facility because she still has a dick because you don't right. want the other way around yeah. but at least in that situation I mean, it's all, it's such it, it's such a weird gray area of society that we can't figure out yet because it's already enough. Like, you're happy that people can be themselves. That's first and foremost. But then now you have some people, like, I read something insane, like, like 80% of, of, what is it, institutionalized trans people have a sex offense in their book. So it's like, at that point, well, you know what I mean? It kind of puts everybody in a bind because you don't know where what prison to put them in because over here they could get taken advantage of. Over here they could take advantage of people. So it's like, what do you really do? I feel like there's got to be some type. We have to have a serious discussion as a, like a society to sit down and say, what are we going to do with this? Because uh, You it's can't even just thing. isolate them into their own because then it can no. be considered a hate crime. It's still, right. But I think that at some point you, you have to – I mean it's, they are in a system that – a punishment system. So at that point, you lose all your other rights. Why do you have that right? You know what I mean? Well, it's you, like you the reason so you many... still get that right is because it's a medical thing. Mm -hmm. Like um, if she's transitioning into a woman and like she has her boobs, like she's already on those hormones. And if you just take those hormones away, yeah. it can cause a lot of really like sick, uh, like cause you to get like really sick. So like, yeah, they're a criminal and they're a part of um, this of like the they they now the system, belong yeah. to the system. Yeah. But that's against their rights. Yeah. But question, you also get sick if you get taken to prison and you were on heroin and they don't give you heroin so that you. So, like, I get what yeah. you're saying and I completely understand yeah. what you're saying. And I understand there's, there's a humane way to do it. I think there is a way that we. But I think that's what I mean by as a society, we have to have a serious discussion yeah. on how we do this and what constitutes what. Because I do agree. 
it, it also begs a question if you say that, like if you stop the hormones, I know they're androgynous, should you be taking them in the first place? But that's a whole different discussion. Um, because if, 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 if you're taking something and you stop taking it other than like food, water, like normal shit that everybody, and you stop taking something androgynous and then it, something happens to your body, it's not good for your body. That's what we would consider yeah. with every other scenario. It's such a, it's a fascinating conversation. I'm sorry to like take this in a weird place because it is, but you have like real life experience yeah. with this. So it's good to have that good to like hear your perspective on it because it's, it's a, it's a very weird touchy subject that people don't like to touch on. They don't like to talk about because it's like, or if they do like to talk about it, you're like, what's your deal? Like, you know, typically yeah. they have a terrible idea or they have one way or the other. And I think there is a really nuanced discussion there that people need to have on like, what do we do here? How do we make it so that everybody is safe? Everybody is taken care of and in these situations. And it's, you know, it, it was a good, it's a good argument, especially like they will have, have almost like withdrawal systems symptoms yeah. if they take it away. But if you were on heroin, they wouldn't say, Oh, you still get your heroin. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's a very, it's a very touchy situation. And I've, I've, I've had friends who have went in and, 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 and had to deal with certain things like that, where they've had like a, a, a man who transitioned to be a woman. There was like, there was like a, a well-known, female before it was almost before trans became like a big thing in society like it's it's always been there but before it was like at the forefront like it is now and her name was beyonce that's what they called her and and then and, and she was in the men's side and you know there was a whole it was a big problem because anytime she'd get arrested you know there was all kinds of sex going on all of a sudden in the yeah. jail and they're like this is so much to deal with. they didn't know what to do and, it, and that's kind of where the question comes from. Like, what do you even do in these scenarios? See, with me, like, I don't mind talking about it. I don't oh, yeah. try to, I personally don't have any of my, like, political, I used to all the time, especially when I was with my ex, because he was very, like, he talks about whatever he wanted, like, he yeah. didn't care, but I don't, I don't try to voice my, like, political views on anything too much, just because, like, and it doesn't matter what way you're on it, yeah, somebody yeah. is going to hate you. Oh, yeah. So, like, I, I'll have conversations, and I understand where people come from, like this guy. Like, like I'm, like, extremely respectful Yeah. either way. Like, oh, yeah. If it's a he or she. But it gets hard, and I feel like it, even having the conversation, like, if you were to try to separate them in a prison, like, yeah. it, it is a hard conversation to have because no matter what decision they make, if they're like, oh, if he he might be wanting to be a woman, but he has a dick, he's still considered a man. Yeah. Or she is a woman who's transitioning to a man and no longer has her chest, but she's yeah. still like, I think no matter what anybody would choose to do with that situation, people will hate. Oh yeah. There's the no way to win regardless. Cause yeah. they'll be like, well, you're, you're pushing. Like if you try to mix them, well, that's a hate crime. Why yeah. are you separating them? Yeah. But like, it's also hard for anybody. I feel like. Yeah. I think, I honestly think that, uh, that's one question we've had. Cause, uh, we have, uh, very really strong experience with the shit and that's one question we've had is is in in our conversations is like if someone commits like a heinous crime at what point do you no longer like i don't care anymore you know what i mean like i don't care what you yeah I, you know what i mean and it's a it's a sad thing to have to get into but it's like when you're in that sect of society which you have way more you know experience with it with working there and stuff it, it becomes like a, a very it's a some people are in there forever some people were in there only for a little bit. You know what I mean? You don't know how to deal with everybody. And some people go in there. Like, I've had friends that went in there and came out with a degree. You know what I mean? And worked hard. Yeah, I know some of them. I worked in the education unit, too, and there was this guy. He had been, like, I think he embezzled money and stuff and, like, sold drugs and did a whole lot of wild shit. Yeah. And he actually ended up being, like, one of the coolest guys I've ever met in there. Was super educated, was helping other offenders get their education and move on with their life after and he still had forever to be in there. And it was just cool that, like, somebody that did stuff like that, you can see that they're changing and trying. Yeah. So, like, when you go in, everybody, like, if you're a, an officer, they're like, oh, you have to hate them. Mm -hmm. Like, with the man that's transitioning into a woman, she she's transitioning into a woman, but because she's in a men's facility, they say, no, don't call her a woman. Yeah. And that's controversial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And honestly, that could get you your ass beat. If you're sitting here, yeah, she's in a man's prison, but you're calling her a man, he, like, she could turn around and try to stab you or yeah, beat yeah. your ass. Right. Or, it could because become I'm not a man, but you're in a men's facility. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard. It's all kind of crazy. So that, that person, the embezzler, was that Andy Dufresne? No. Okay, I don't know. No. You know Andy Dufresne? You know what I'm talking about? What the fuck, Shawshank? 
Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Right. I haven't seen Shawshank. <gasps> and the whole time I worked what there, the there's fuck? a guy who's like, you need to see it. And I really want to see it. I just haven't seen you it. You got to. It's such. It's like a classic. I got made fun of for not seeing it, so I've seen it. Yeah. I want to yeah. watch it because everybody's like, you got to watch it. Yeah. And then working at a prison, everybody's like, you got to watch it. Well, I mean, you shouldn't watch it for that reason because that it's not anything like anything yeah. modern. And it's like horrible. It's like the experiences. But the main character ends up helping a lot of people get their degrees and stuff in the prison and helps them with their fight. Yeah. It's like, so that's why I was like, is that Andy Dufresne? <laughs> Andy. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the guy, like, even the lady that was, his, like, he helped, like, he was the assistant to, like, she helped them, and I just thought it was cool. I would go down yeah. there and visit, like, her and him and talk to them, and, like, just getting to know, like, where he had been in his life at one point to where he wants to be now, like. Yeah. I think he had 10 or 15 years, and it's, I've been there, like, six years. Well, that's how Gypsy been, Rose like, married, met her husband. See, I heard about this woman, but I, I've not paid attention to her yeah. i hate Is to that... say it but i don't pay the diaz fire i don't keep up like i no. saw uh megan the stallion and cardi b are in like a fucking war no, right now. Nicki yeah. Minaj. yeah that's what i meant Nicki yeah. Minaj. Minaj. It's okay. and i was i was reading on it a little bit and i'm like it's so much i love Nicki minaj and yeah. i like megan the stallion and it's like i get where like megan was coming from you know but then it's like yeah, they're just fighting. And each I just other. don't keep up with that kind of stuff. And I really should keep up with some more like I like that so I actually am in a feud right now. Do you guys know I'm in a feud? Mm -hmm. Like a Barry? huge fucking feud. Oh my god. I'm so you guys had to watch this video. This is pissed me off, dude. This is from the Outhouse Super Show. If you guys want to check it out, you probably should have. So uh have you heard about these uh Kokomo press guys? More like Kokomo unimpressed, right? What the fuck? No? I'm a dick, right? <laughs> this Jordan Granger. You know how many Jordan Grangers it takes to screw in a light bulb? I wonder how many. That'd be a nice question. One, right? he stands still, and the world revolves around what him. What the fuck, I mean, dude? He's not wrong. That's not nice. What about this Try one? This, one this on. is the best one. How about Courtney Richardson? Oh, what? that's you. You know the difference between Courtney and a mosquito? What? <gasps> At least a mosquito will quit sucking when you slap it. Yeah, see? He's Talking not. about you. Okay, but he is kind of accurate. Hey, yeah. if somebody slaps me and I'm well, sucking, I'm going to keep going. Brian Allen West Jr. Brian West Allen, um, what? You know the difference between him and a refrigerator? Hmm, that's interesting. A refrigerator don't fart when you take the meat out. <laughs> what the fuck? No. <laughs> Let's no. see if he, what's, what does he say about Hypocrisy Jones? At oh, least calls him hypocrisy out. Hypocrisy Jones, this guy. Talk, let me hear what it. What a nice guy. What, what the, the fuck? fuck? That's such bullshit. He likes Hypocrisy Jones, but the reason why... That's an interesting thing, too, but we're not going to put that so up there. who is Barry? What is the Barry? <laughs> Barry is a fucking puppet. Barry Weinfield, man, named after Jerry Seinfeld. And he, he, sent, he, he sent me for, a friend request. Yeah, he's a, he's a puppet, and he's from Kokomo. He works for Outhouse Super, the Outhouse Super Show, which is another uh, podcast locally. And uh, he likes to fucking be an asshole. He's doing comedy. He's a failed comedian. A failed comedian. You got no laughs. So you're <laughs> not friends fun. with us? Fuck this guy, dude. I hate yeah, him we so are. much. You are friends? This is a feud. Okay. We're not friends. Oh, we're feuding with him. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Listen, Barry. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> oh, fucking Barry, dude. We're going to fight this Clip puppet. this, Barry. Actually, uh, he's lucky, but I have some footage that I'm going to be uh, releasing this week of Barry. And you guys are going to be... It's very interesting. And some stuff with him at the club with some girls... And you guys stay tuned for that because I'm fucking calling him out. This week he's getting called out. He thinks he can make fun of Joe. Fake, go on stage and make fun of me. Like this fucking Does the world revolve around you? I mean, I, no. Yes. What? No, I mean. I'll you slap you, but then you, you wouldn't stop anyway. So. <laughs> yeah. And he didn't make any jokes about Foxy Jones because he's black. I know that's, that's the reason. He's like, I don't want to smoke because he's black. Yeah. That's literally what he told me. It's a hate crime. It's a hate crime if you make some joke. Yeah. Is it a hate crime if he doesn't make a joke? That's what I'm saying. Yes. I agree. I think he's racist. Go fuck yourself, Barry. <laughs> Seriously. Anyway, yeah, we're in a feud with a puppet right now. Who's the fucking Yeah, puppet? fuck that yeah. guy. So yeah. who owns the puppet? Uh, the puppet is probably owned by Jeff Dunham, if I'm being honest. Just kidding. You know who Jeff Dunham is? I know who Jeff Dunham is. Outhouse are, is my boyfriend huh? and his band. Jalapeno on a stick thing. Jalapeno on a stick. Yes. And then um, Jeff. Uh, Gold. Gold, he actually, I got to meet him. He yeah. did, he does the crackers thing, and then he, Caucasian. and I took some of his headshots and stuff. And he has actually like worked with um, Jeff Dunham. Yeah. And, like, I Hell guess yeah. he had like a key or something to his studio where he can go work on his own puppets in there. Nice. And I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, I want to get this for Barry. 
To be fair, Barry it's probably like liked butt it. Plug. It's not like a butt plug. <laughs> you know, he does get probably... stuff stuck up his ass. They have sex toys that look like that. They do? Yeah, they got like the to- like dildos that have like the yeah stuff on the outside That's because true. when you pull it in, it's supposed to. It's kind of like anal beads. When you put an anal bead in and then it's like riggedy and you pull mm-hmm. it out, it's supposed to be like really attractive. Yeah, I saw a picture of a girl with like a picture of anal beads, and I was like, oh my god, this dishwasher comes with a pull start, and I was like, that's not nice. I hate that <laughs> joke. I think it's inappropriate. What do you guys think? You're terrible. What? I didn't write it. I'm saying You're what You're supposed they said. to be a feminist. Did you know in Canada right now, these fuckers have bagged milk? Yes, I did oh, know that. That's dumb, dude. You can't refill your, you can't make Kool Aid in a bag. You don't make Kool Aid. You can make wine milk? in a bag. Why can't you make Kool Aid? Because Kool Aid's better when you use the, when you reuse, reuse a milk jug. That's what I mean. You don't know. Oh. I don't put my Kool Aid in a milk jug. It. I don't like curdled milk. <laughs> Fuck you, Barry. Anyway, um, I don't I just like milk. Buried. Period. You don't like milk? Ugh. Fuck. Now he judges me for dipping my Oreos, so I'll dip my Oreos. I'll be like, "Hey, Jeff," and I'll shove it in my mouth. And I'm yeah. over there dry heaving. I don't, don't know what it milk. is. It's the cow titties. I don't, it's from a young age, man. Milk just makes me. I can eat cottage cheese. Ice it, cream. It, it was probably something to do with your mom. You uh, probably <laughs> drank one fucking glass of curdled milk. It's probably like, because his mom never breastfed him. Yeah. She didn't love him. Yeah. How dare she you? Did too through a straw. <laughs> Yeah, she did. <laughs> <laughs> Poor mom. Rest in peace. Did you guys see they're doing uh, Bira tacos over at Yoke? Did you guys check those out? Those are pretty crazy. Ooh. I did see that. Actually, the girl that does the Unchained Souls. Unchained uh, Souls. Michaela? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, her and her sister posted on there. I was like, oh, that looks so good. I try to keep up on everything Kokomo. She was like, oh, yeah, you know Michaela Clark? No. She works in the, near where I work. Yeah, KTP. Time, yeah. She used, I used to work in Valve Body. She, that's a girl, girl who dropped there. a ton of weight, dude. Yeah. yeah, she goes to the gym. She looks good. Yeah, she killed it. I've never told her this, but like, she likes women too. And like, for the longest time, she was dating a girl, and I always thought she was super cute. Yeah. And now I like actually know her. And I'm like, now she's a guy she works with, right? Does yeah, he's other? cool. Yeah. Brandon. They're always together. I would hate that. Working with your significant other, I need a break. I wouldn't want to work with him. Yeah, could you imagine? She couldn't keep up. Yeah. That's why you're... Because you're on a forklift. She has to walk next to you. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he what? can't keep That's up. why you stay over here, and then I'm all the way over there. But, uh, I Mik- would kill you. Michaela's really cool <laughs> with the dogs and stuff, Like, but like the taco thing. Her and her sister, though, I talked to both of them on the phone two yeah. times. Sound identical. For mm. real. I told her sister, I was like, you sound like... Kayla. I totally thought I was yeah. having a conversation. Probably gonna sound like a creep because she doesn't really know me, but we like went to the same birthday party for somebody one time and then I was like, I've seen that girl before and I think I have her on Facebook or something. I but... admire her because of like her helping all these animals. Yeah. And I've wanted to help for a long time, but uh, when I was with my ex and we had a house, we didn't have a fence in the yard. Oh, yeah. And now we have a house with a fence in the yard and he sometimes hates puppies, but like, because he doesn't like cleaning up after him, but uh I like that we have a fencing yard and we can help. I was going to be getting a blue healer who was going to have his leg removed because he got hit by a car and it oh broke God. his pelvic phone and his leg. But um, another rescue ended up taking him. Yeah. But they pay out of pocket. Actually, they think they're getting ready to do some fundraisers just trying to raise some money because any like vet fees or What's that dogs. called? Maybe some people there. Um, I know she had it posted on the uh, Unchained Souls page. Okay. I know people were uh, sending money to it. I think it has like $1,500. Because they wiped out their account. Because they use it to pay for, like, dog food, vet bills, if there's emergencies. I mean, I know she is taking out of her own personal credit card and, like, paid well, for dogs that have had, like, emergencies. We yeah. could do we could do a comedy show like the Humane Society does comedy shows. They do that comedy show that benefits the Humane Society. But then I, I was driving by the Humane Society and saw a group of females, uh, mostly females, who were all, like, protesting, protesting because of the city's, like ordinances kind of fuck them as far like they can't get help for certain animals that are left outside like they found they had one picture that was heartbreaking of, a, of like a dead doll that had just basically started like uh what do you call it when they get hard what the fuck like you know mm. you know what I'm yeah yeah but it was like a fucking dog dying just a I know, uh, necrotic no i know michaela had posted something about where uh this dog had been sitting on the side of the road, got hit by a car for days, and mm-hmm. the city wouldn't come and get it. So nope. some of the people that volunteer with the rescue for, that we do, yeah, uh, went and took their time and paid to have him cremated. And oh, and it's fucking, it's kind of sad. Like, yeah, I understand they have humane societies around here, but the fact that I mean, Kokomo's pretty big compared to where I came from, pretty right. small. Like, you could help people that are trying. Like, stray yeah. dogs can be a right. problem. Like, they can be. A lawsuit because your dog got out and you bit it bit the kid, or um, getting like 
causing trash and making your town look dirty, like you think, like they would be a little more concerned and help. Right. But I know that Michaela and them take a lot of dogs because the Humane Society can't take them. Yeah, it's like over, like overfill. Or and I know far. she said that sometimes the Humane Society will ask them for help because they have numerous fosters who can take them. Yeah. Like we have five dogs of our own and right now we're fostering four. Yeah. Two. That's a lot of dogs. Yeah. Our house is very open. I have a dog room. Our yard is huge. Yeah. Uh, so far right now it kind of sucks because our yard is mud because of the weather. But like. Other than that, like, in the summer and stuff, it'll be so nice because my house won't be as dirty because of the mud. Yeah. And then they'll be able to be outside more. And it's nice having the big yard because I can leave them out there and they can play and then they get, like, they're fed. And, I mean, they um, they pay for the neuters. They pay for the shots, worm or heartworm, everything out of pocket. Yeah, that's good. It's nice. I had to get my cats fixed because they're, like, fucking in heat all the time now. <laughs> With their asses in the air. I'm like, I can't help you, sis. <laughs> That's not the kind of pussy I like. <laughs> a little hairy for my taste. Uh, I did see this, though. Did you guys see Joe Rogan just got $250 million on Spotify? But then they're also letting him put the podcast on other platforms. That's so weird, right? Like, they're going to pay for him. He's a podcaster. He's a stand-up comedian. You really suck at knowing people. No, he's just he's got the... I, he's not worth knowing. He's got the number one podcast in the world, and he's a stand-up comedian, and, uh, you know, you've heard... You know, I've, I've only watched clips of it, like, yeah. of famous people. Well, it's been stuck on uh, Spotify for many years because they moved it to there and became the only platform, but I guess with the new deal that he's getting, he got $150 million for the last deal. For the new deal, he's getting $250 million, and they're letting him post it wherever he wants, which is so weird because they've actually lost the official rights to it, so it's like... A, I don't know. It's very awkward. You ever think how wild it is that people can make two hundred fifty million dollars a year? I think it's crazy. Yeah. Like that's cool for them, but like, I'm yeah. not saying I'm poor because yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean we have money. Yeah. But like, just it's good the to whole, know, the, Jeff. The, the just the whole I'll be difference. Bye later. <laughs> the, I'm just sending some dogs into your house to go yeah. in there reconnaissance. We're mission. getting we're letting Get the, the money. dogs out. <laughs> Who let the dogs out? Woo. Um, Woo. But just the fact that like the the highest paying person and the lowest. Like, yeah, there's a disparity of the world. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's the only the only system that they really have is the, you know merit based based on you know that's what we have is a capitalistic system. It's trying to be merit based, but sometimes you know you never know what happens. I've become oh, like this very like earthy hippie person in the last couple months. Fuck yeah, you're a communist now. Let's do it. No, I just commune. they're like Jeff. Queens your house. <laughs> no, like I uh, I don't really ever litter, but just thinking like people litter sometimes, and I've seen like videos where like raccoons get their paws stuck in cans yeah. and stuff. And then I've been chewing gum lately, and I'm like, you can't throw that out the window because it can kill a bird. And yeah, like oh. all these people that are fucking poor that have nowhere to go, and it's just like I don't know what's going on in this head right now. But <laughs> seriously, I've become so like I like people, and I feel bad for people now more than before. You're I becoming like, empathetic. Yeah, I yeah, guess. Right. Well, I used to be like, I used to be like. Fuck you. Yeah. Like, ask Jeff. I tell you, fuck you. To you everybody. lost your punk rockness. You no longer have Dang. your edge. No, i am still got an edge. I'm rubbing off on her. You oh are? Oh, my yeah. God. I do think helping with these dogs has kind of opened my heart a little bit more about, like, right. being more cautious. It's made me cranky, but. <laughs> yeah, he, he bitches about it all the time. Uh, he's bitching about all these Kayla, bitches. I was like, I was like, Jeff's still going to hate me because. <laughs> One of the dogs shit or something, and she's like, "You guys can take a break off of puppies for a little bit." I'm like, "He'll be fine." Yeah, I was over there going, "Oh." oh. <laughs> we have this one right now. We just took one in. Her name's Maggie. Yeah. Her Ma- Maggie May, and I call her um, Maggie, Maglodon, yeah. Magpie, Mag the Stallion, Mag the Stallion. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we have a. I, the reason we got him, he came from Kentucky. Uh, he's a German Shepherd. Shepherd Pit Mix, and he was at a cat rescue. Yeah. And they got rid of him because he, of his breed, they thought he would kill cats. He was six weeks old. Yeah. It's not usually. They were worried he's going to slay that pussy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They're like, this dog yeah. can't be in here slaying that pussy. Um, you know what I'm saying? And I really want to keep him. Yeah. He's my boy. He now. My boy. What's his name? Meg? Archie. Archie. Archibald, but I call you him. You should name them all based off of fucking Jughead. So we had a dog named Rocky. Yeah. And you always hear about sometimes dogs choose their owner. Yeah. This dog always wanted to be with me. He would just look at me in his big dark eyes and just, you know, and we had to get rid of him. And I'm like, 
I'm not getting attached to He's another dog. He's making his team real sad, okay? Yeah. We were choosing between two, and we decided Rocky was kind of large, and if we got Rocky, we wouldn't be able to help as much. Yeah. Because my golden retriever is like 70 pounds, my pit bull is 70 pounds, and then he would be pretty huge. Like, he was massive. Yeah. And after he found out that he was going to be possibly finding a, a home... He was like, I really like him. I don't want him to get a dog. And I'm like, why didn't we just pick this one? Yeah, but he wasn't. At least you're fostering dogs and not children. Yeah, I thought about fostering you know, kids, though. Right. I love kids. Yeah. But then sometimes I'm like, I'm kind of on like defense of I want a baby and he would like to have a baby with me. But like, fuck those kids, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I see my nieces and my nephews and they get on my nerves sometimes. Like, <laughs> you can't send those away. I'm like, I'm glad you get to go back to your mom. <laughs> like Andy stick, Smith, the stick comedian. Stick with the dogs. Andy yeah. Smith, the comedian, says parenting is the only job where if you're not good at it, you can go to prison. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or doctor, or I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you're not good, did you guys hear about that doctor of Doctor Love down in Florida? Do you guys remember that story? Oh, I heard something about that. Yeah, the Doctor Love down in Florida. He's a young kid. He was like 16 years old, black kid that had opened up his own gynecology clinic and <laughs> was like looking at vaginas. He's down there going, ah, I know what that's these. That's how that 16 year old started being a teacher. Absolutely. He was like, he was She's like, going to teach him how to be pussy doctor. Yeah. yeah and then she, and then the first time this happens, when dad walks in on career day with your catalytic converter, you're like, fuck. <laughs> your teacher's catalytic converter. like, oh, my God, dad, why would you do that? Now, I saw that earlier, and I was dying laughing. I did uh, I did have a question uh, for you guys. Um, um, humans may be food and go, go over war and just by breathing. Do you think we're just going to have to say fuck it and die? I mean, I can't breathe, so this is on you guys. That's true. You can't breathe. Actually, you breathe more <laughs> It's just small little risk. Um, if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. Exactly, exactly. I could I mean, get hit by a car walking to my car right now. You know, yeah. like you could be, you could walk out of your fart and pass out. I'm probably gonna pass out right now. Pass out from farting. You from farting? Yeah. You're farting. To be honest, I'm not <laughs> saying this from a selfish perspective, but yeah. I don't worry about that shit anymore. Yeah. I mean, I, you're like, I've already... He saw God one too many times in a preacher. Oh, my ayahuasca. Was that what it was? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's... you're butt chugging ayahuasca. He's like, I saw Jesus. He came out of my rear end. It was insane. I'm done. I don't care about none of this no more. Yeah, I'm just... <laughs> she don't let me do accents. She's already look at her. She's getting mad that I did an accent. It was just like a small one. It was just like one of these. That's because you're messing with my people. This is your people your down people. in Tennessee. My Tennessee gonna... people. I was going to say Kentucky. Oh, yeah. Same. Are you from Tennessee? Because you're the only person I want to kill. <laughs> what? The, minute, the, the entire time we were in Tennessee, I kept telling about that. Yeah. <laughs> what is well, that? You know, the joke is, uh, are you from Tennessee? Because you're the only 10 I yeah. see. So just subvert the joke and say, are you from Tennessee? Because I might fucking kill you. <laughs> How dare you. Uh, for my friend's birthday, we went to go get a <laughs> fucking but, uh, butcher knife thing to cut the cake or whatever. Yeah. And uh, my friend Destiny said something, and I was like, yeah, this knife would look good cutting you open. <laughs> in front of some dude that works there, and he just, like, was like. <laughs> I do want to give a shout-out to, uh, I can't, uh, Kashol Law, LLC. He's going to actually come on the podcast at some point. He's a, a lawyer out of Indianapolis. Um, he seems pretty cool. Um, but if you need him after killing your friend. Um, he might help you out. He's a criminal defense attorney. So. Now I'm gonna beat those insides up. Yo, <laughs> chop, chop, chop. <laughs> All right, I think we're gonna wrap this up. I do want to one more time throw it up there. Brian and I are excited uh, for the people out there who uh, are gonna come see the comedy uh, open mic on Thursday. It starts February fifteenth. Uh, sign up start at seven thirty or DM the page ahead. It is downstairs in the comedy den of cooper's pub so we're gonna have a good time we're gonna do some showcases later on after that so if you're something you're be interested in we're gonna need comedians for that cool. especially people that have some time because i know that we're gonna be building up showcases oh, with people me out. Oh, you, you were, i'm just I'm saying just what kidding. you said bro you just said it all right <laughs> and we're back um <laughs> no if you have, we're gonna need some people that have time because like we're gonna do showcases every couple of months a comedy showcase is based on our open mics, but in the beginning, obviously, we won't have anybody who's built any material up. So we're going to need people from around the area that actually have some. But Brian will be doing all that, which you know, Brian, so mm -hmm. it'll be exciting. But, yeah, we're, we're excited to do something. There's something more, you know what I mean? Because I know a lot of people go out to Blind Tiger on Wednesday, and then so on Thursdays that they're like, hey, man, I liked what I did at I did, like I did Wednesday, but I think this would sound better. Or you listen to your shit back, and you're like, oh. I want to try that in a different way. You don't have to wait till next week. You can come right on out yeah. and hang out with us and have a good time. But yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna be downstairs uh, in the in the bar down there. We have a private bar 
It's a really nice setup, so it'll be sweet. So if you like comedy, if you're interested in hanging out with some people, if you want to try to get on stage for the first time, come on out to Cooper's Pub on February 15th at 8 p.m. Well, 7.30, sign up. We're going to have 10 to 15 spots, so it'll be a fun time. So come out to our open mic. I, I appreciate you guys for hanging out with us. I want to do Thanks a shout-out real quick. Yeah, uh, Thank you, Courtney, for coming into the house oh, yeah, and thank hanging you. out. Thank you, uh, thank you Nick, <laughs> Nikki. Nick Shear, Nicolette, and of course, donkey. thank you, Jeff, for hanging out. Donkey! donkey. Cakes! <laughs> Cake, donkey okay. cakes. And of course, as always, I'm your host, Jordan Gritty. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. This has been the Kokomo Press Podcast. We love you. Hey, you just listened to the Kokomo Press Podcast. We thank you for tuning in. We hope you had a great time. If you did, go ahead and like us, subscribe to us, hit that notification bell, do all the things that help us get seen. Go find us over on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok. Like us, follow us there. And if you want to really, really help us out, we now have a new thing called Facebook subscriptions. It's only $4.99 a month, and it helps us build out even more than what we have already. Helps us get more equipment, helps us put money in the shows, because we give you comedy shows. We give you guys skits. We give you guys podcasts. We give you guys jokes. And if you want to be a part of a group of people that actually get to talk to us and tell us your input first and get to directly speak to us, maybe even you know help us write some of these jokes, you can be a part of the group. Join that subscriber base. It's only $4.99 a month, and it's not a lot, but it helps us out tremendously. And it's going to give you an opportunity to maybe win some merch here and there. We're going to do a lot of fun things with our subscribers. So please check us out everywhere you can. And if you want to, subscribe to our page. Thanks for listening to this podcast. We love you. Thank you. Two kisses.